This week on PlayStation, we're talking about PlayStation cracking down unjustly on cheap platinum trophies, Monster Hunter making the jump to PlayStation, and we're pitting God of War against The Last of Us. We'll talk about all this and more because this is PSI Love You XOXO. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. That's Blessing. That's Janet. I'm Greg. And you, of course, can get this show ad-free, watch us live, and get 38 exclusive episodes of bonus content all on patreon.com slash kindoffunny. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunny. You can get all those benefits for us, for Xcast, for Kind of Funny Podcast. It's all happening over there, and we're having a great time. Uh, if you have no bucks to toss our way, support us on the Epic Game Store, Fortnite, Rocket League, or Fall Guys with the creator code kindoffunny. You can get PSI Love You XOXO for free with ads and without the post stuff, all that bonus content I'm talking about, over on youtube.com slash games and podcast services around the globe. Uh, Patreon producers, we want to thank you. Delaney Twining, One Up Pest Control, Gwinnett, uh, Brian Cheney, Alex Greedel, Jason L, Mick at the Nanobiologist Abramson, Derek Gregg, Donald Eccles, and of course, Jason L. Today we're brought to you by Chime, Shady Rays, and Mint Mobile. But let's start with a PSN message from you. Blessing, how many green drinks do you need? What? Oh, you know, I didn't even notice that, uh, but I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah, I got my green LaCroix, the key lime, uh -huh. which honestly... I'll say right now is the best LaCroix. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. That key, the key lime one is disgusting. Really? You don't like the key lime? Yeah. It's oh, so sweet. It. It's really gross to me. Okay. Yeah. There, you can never describe a LaCroix as sweet. There's no sweetness going on in this thing. It's just it's, the hint of key lime that I like. Key lime. Like I remember now I'm getting flashbacks to like, you know, I do Instacart for like my groceries most of the time and I put in lime and they brought me key lime. And it was a bad week mm. in our household. I'm like, who's willing to drink this? I think I think Isaiah took up that mantle and was like, it's not it's not that bad. God bless him. God bless him mm -hmm. for out there carrying the carrying the weight and getting it done out there. And then you're drinking these Mountain Dews yes. that it turns out Andy bought for content, cracked all of them open, read the codes, then re shut the cap and put it back in. Yeah. How which, flat is this Mountain Dew? How long actually, ago was that? Apparently it was only a few weeks ago, which I feel like is A few weeks ago. <laughs> But it's, it's not flat. It's the thing. It's not. It's not flat. It's good. And it was. It's. It's been the thing where I've been. I've been seeing the Mountain Dew in the fridge for the last few weeks, and I assume they belong to somebody because, sure. like, we have drinks that we have stocked in the fridge, but it's like the cans of Lacroix because you know Tim works here, and then we have like Diet Coke and Coke and stuff, and it's like this look because Nick works cans because because Nick works here. Um, but the Mountain Dews are these bottles of Mountain Dew, so I I have been on other under the assumption that they belong to somebody. Yeah, I can't just assume that these are for us to take. And then I finally asked. I was like, Hey, I use Mountain Dews for anybody, and they're like, No, yeah, they bought them for the Call of Duty code. They opened them to get the code, and then they put them in the fridge. And I was like, All right, cool. Well, that's enough. That's good enough for me. I'll try. Try it out, and it's good. Like it's not it's not as fresh. As it could be, <laughs> you know. It's there's... not right off the mountain, Mountain Dew. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's not spicy. So <laughs> it's not spicy, but it's not flat either. Okay. You know, it's somewhere in the middle. Fair enough. Uh, today's PSN message comes from Chip, who wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y, just like you can to be part of the show, and says, with the news that PlayStation is cracking down on cheap or easy platinum games, how do you guys feel about this? And how do you think trophy slash platinum hunters would feel about this? As you all know, I assume, ladies and gentlemen, there was a thing called Thanksgiving last week. I took the week off. This is when PlayStation decided to slip it in, motherfuckers, that they're trying to outlaw all this stuff. We go to Screen Rant. Their first two paragraphs read like this. Sony will soon be cracking down on easy platinum games and shovelware on the PlayStation Store, according to a new report. These kinds of games are usually cheap, low-quality digital offerings that only exist to give the player a quick platinum trophy for their account. Sony has had a growing problem with shovelware for a long time as it has approved more and more games released on the PlayStation Store. An anonymous source has provided DEX.EXE with a letter reportedly sent to, by Sony to developers explaining the new policy on, quote, spam and duplicative content, as reported by The Gamer. The letter defines that Sony considers shovelware in the PlayStation Store, what, I'm sorry, de defines what Sony considers shovelware in the store and how it will be reviewing games submitted for approval. Games that clearly copy other titles' assets and functionality are guilty, as well as partners who try to publish multiple variants of the same game. Sony also specifically states that providing different trophies for a duplicative game is not enough to differentiate it. Now, the good news here, ladies and gentlemen, of course, is that these are just reports. 
Okay. PlayStation hasn't said anything official yet, bless you. You think they're going to come God. out and say officially, hey, they're not, they're not going to acknowledge it. They don't want people to know that ZJ the Ball exists on the store already. First off, why would they come out and be like, we're we deleting all the big, ZJ the Ball? We can, there's a big sigh of relief here, right? Because what are they talking about there? Talking about duplicated games, yes. spam games, repetitive. That means I'll still get Platy, per, Platy Bird. Just There'll one still Platy be Bird. a Platy, Platy Bird, but they wouldn't be necessarily Platy Bird all the way, you know, yeah. one through six or whatever. You get one ZJ the Ball. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to well, think Well, see, of the ZJ ones. the Ball, that's, little, that's fast and loose on that one because they have the different chapters, but then it's ZJ the Ball, like X Factor or DX or whatever they call it, where it's like the same level but a little bit harder. It's clearly duplicative, the uh, ZJ the Ball. I don't think they're putting it. You know it what? Here's the thing. Months of Bear, work give me the for one. each of these releases. Here's the thing, people who make these games. You're doing the Lord's work. No, you're not. <laughs> and I am not a licensed lawyer. But I am willing to represent you. I am willing to represent you at PlayStation Studios if you ever come into this. Jim Ryan ever calls you into the office and says, listen, we've noticed these are all duplicative. Bring me in as your lawyer. I was, first off, don't say another word. Sam, call my lawyer Greg Miller. I will come in in a suit and tie, and I will explain the differences between these different games and why they should all exist. You, you think they don't, like, you, you think is the small differences are going to make the difference to them. There's difference. You think as long as like long, they're very clear, I'll be like, ladies and as gentlemen, long as you move this pedal, ladies the pedal and gentlemen over here. of the PlayStation jury, Jim Ryan, I'm Herman. Just, I'm just a small town this, PlayStation this lawyer. I might just be. Call Saul for video games. I might just be a small town video <laughs> game lawyer. All right, but what I see here is you talking about not having duplicated lists, and that being the only change. You know what I mean? Mm. Clearly, you can see in this version of Pretty Bird, right here. These, these come in different. We got different pipes here. We're different color bird, different atmosphere. Not at the same game. We didn't just duplicate it and give it different trophies. You know what? It could help your case as well, Greg. Yearly um, sports releases. Mm. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah. every level of ZJ the ball different as Madden is? You know? Yeah. Over no, on the D. It's not. <laughs> Why do you have more sources? <laughs> Oh, on this one? Yeah. I mean, I have lots of sources when it comes to trophy. I'm on the Dex.exe article, right, where they have the thing. And the letter looks pretty real. It looks, You know what I mean? It looks pretty real over here. I, I will say I've also had my own personal sources hit me up. What's the say? thing I mentioned on the episode of KFG where we covered this? What they say? That is true. Here's the thing. Hmm. I can forward you my source. When did we outlaw freedom? Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. do, you, do you really want to have this soundbite be the one floating around on the internet, Greg? You, of all people on the show? He's had worse. He's had worse. Yeah, I've definitely had worse soundbites. Yeah, worse. This is outrageous. This is incredible. I am glad that they're doing this. This it only is. affects Greg. Like, that's the thing. When I read this, yeah, I was this like, only this negatively is not a affects Greg. Thing. And maybe yes. the developers of ZJ the Ball. For everybody else, it's a great thing because it means they're getting less trash on the store. It means that uh, uh, games that actual indie games that put in work to make. Those are getting more visibility because they're not having to compete with 19 episodes of Platy Bird and Pretty Bird and ZJ the Ball. Yeah, they were really competing <laughs> with them. That's really a lot of people are going to PlayStation Store sort by newest release. And that's I mean, now they might. Now they might. They now aren't. They won't. That's this the doesn't thing I solve do. the problem. It. It's a bad experience when you do it because but maybe of ZJ it'll be the now. Ball. Once you get the ZJ the Balls out here, <laughs> once you get once you get also, ZJ the Ball out the way, it's gonna be a great experience. Sort Imagine what Greg can do with this freed up time now, you know? You know, you guys already talked me off the ZJ the ball thing. I stopped doing that. Yes, I did the Platy Birds, but I deserved those. All right, I deserved to fall off the wagon and have a weekend with Platy Bird. All right? I deserved that. And the good news is next time I want to do it, it'll still be there. I'll still be able to go get them or whatever. Is, is this correct? Why are you looking at my Legends of Talia Arcadia, which took me 32 seconds to unlock <laughs> wow. 31 seconds? <laughs> Don't worry seconds. about what I'm doing out there, everybody. And you might, and again, and again. You might think this will stop me, PlayStation. This won't <laughs> fucking stop me. Go back up to Talia. Go back up to Talia, whatever the hell it is. That was a visual novel, a real game that, yes, you could go through. And look, I have the trophies in the, oh, yeah, okay, so the different platforms, right? Yeah, PS5 and PS4. This wouldn't stop that. This would, this would stop them from going Legends of Talia DX, Legends of Talia Championship Edition, having the exact same thing. That would stop it. This Legend is just of Talia here looks, though, as if, like, it's an actual game. That is a real game. Yeah. That was a real game that also had an easy like This reminds me of... Uh, what oh. we're doing here... What we're doing here is we're getting into... You know what we don't like? Well, even the head-to-head -head things, were, while not great games, they're different games. What we don't like is the pl Platy Birds. What we don't like is the ZJ the Ball. They're yeah. not... They are not turning their guns to Rattalika's door yet. Yeah, Rattalika no. publishes they, real honestly, games. they better not. <laughs> they publish like real games. games that can be really good. I forgot the one... Uh, one Night Stand. Wasn't that them as well? 
which was a really fun visual novel to go through and make all these mm-hmm. different choices and see I how it plays Blind out. I think Blind Men might have been another one because I remember playing Blind Men back when we did and the they, and they, ha- they are real games that then have really easy trophies. So mm-hmm. like, But that's not what they're outlawing here. They're not doing that. But here's what I'll say. Back to the one on me, Barrett. All right? When they came for CJ the Ball, we said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when they came for Radalika, we said nothing. <laughs> and when they came for Ubisoft, there was no one left to cry out. Greg, how much of this is your fault? That was going to happen think? anyway. Do you think you alerted? How much is my fault? Do you think Zero you alerted percent. PlayStation? The big fault is all y'all writing your articles and your own little podcast saying it's all bad. Oh, man, it's, you know, it's so bad. It's still going to be bad. It's still going to be a nightmare on the PSN to go in there and look at this store. This you could have just let me roll in shit. You said, I don't want to be in the shit. And I said, I want to roll in it. And you guys like, let's take away Greg's fun times. I'm just saying, like, you, you know people from PlayStation listen to the show occasionally. A lot, yeah, a lot of them do. Yeah. I'm sure you put it on somebody's radar that ZJ the Ball and Platy Bird is out here just existing on the store in a duplicative way. <laughs> in a duplicative <laughs> way. I feel, I feel like Greg Miller might be here to blame. I feel like you shot yourself in the foot in this one. I don't one. think that's true. I don't think that's true. And again, you can't stop ZJ the Ball. All you can, and right there, you're, you're highlighting these ones saying these are, like... This, Foxy that, Lane is good. Foxy Lane's a real game. All of those would still be there because those are all versions. Wait, this is how thing. many times did you platinum Foxy Lane? It doesn't what the matter. Fuck? It doesn't matter <laughs> how many what? times. All right. Doesn't matter how many times I'm, I'm platinum in. Three times for Foxy Lane 2, and then we got one, two, three times for the first one. Wow. For audio listeners, he's planning them on both North American and European accounts, and then getting going on the Vita and planning it there too. <laughs> and that would still exist. Got a problem, that didn't man. solve the problem. Here's the problem, Herman. You came in here, Jim. You came in here and thought you got it. We're going to nip this in the bud, but you didn't. You just made them craftier, and we will get our free trophies. And when I say free, I mean the ones we pay for. We will get them. And it doesn't matter how hook or crook, I'm getting them. You didn't stop it. I'm telling you right now. Foxy Land, Mochi Mochi Boy, you need Tell a lawyer. Me about mochi Mochi Boy. Mochi Mochi Boy, you need a lawyer. He doesn't remember his time playing Mochi Mochi Boy. He played I could not. For- you could show. <laughs> go find four different games that even look like Mochi Mochi. I don't. I can't picture what Mochi Mochi he Boy. He played was. it for 26 minutes. He does not know what Mochi Mochi Boy is. And remember too, a lot of that 26 is like you know you do something, but then I'm answering an email and I come back. It's not like I'm usually mm-hmm. sitting there for 26. I might make this has to be a bless you game of me like looking through your platinums and then trying to figure out like. All right, does Greg remember his platinum and showing you three different games? Look forward to that. Maybe as a Patreon show or something. I don't know. This didn't solve anything. You like you all like to think about it. This is like season passes back in the day where people want to get all bent out of shape. That sounds like yeah, that there. You weren't gonna buy the season pass. You don't care about it. You guys do I'm not really, know. <laughs> you don't know the seedy underbelly of the PSN cheap platinum trophy races. It will always be there. Iron Snout. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> Greg does not even remember that you played. No, that. I don't remember any of these games. You know what I mean? Not, not at all. Super Weekend Mode, I vaguely remember because it was annoying. There was something that pissed me off about it. It was tough. I mean, but you did in 31 minutes, though. Zero Topian Invasion that I got in five minutes there. No, I don't remember at all. I don't remember that one. Five minutes. I digress. It's time for a topic of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, what can only be described as 11 weeks ago, on this very show, we sat here and debated The Last of Us Part 1 versus The Last of Us Part 2. Since then, the axis of the PlayStation world has been shaken. No, not by them banning these cheap platinum trophies, which I will get overturned in a code of law. Instead, by the release of God of War Ragnarok. So today, we need to sit here and settle, lady, gentlemen, Barrett. God of War 2018 and... Ragnarok versus The Last of Us Part 1 versus Part 2. They have to go in there and they have to... Which is the best one? So what is the best franchise? What is the best duo? The franchise... Okay, franchise face-off. It's not like a versus versus versus... No, I, I fucked up and said versus right there. Gotcha, I'm sorry gotcha. about that. Oh, Bear's floating in. Look at and we're not doing the... Uh, we don't want to do God of War versus, 20, versus Ragnarok? We don't want to do that discussion? No. Because that was the is Last of Us versus Last of Us Part 2 thing. Yeah, but then we... we but we got to... I mean, we could do it real quick if you want. In yeah. terms of that, how do you want to do it? How do you see it shaking out? In terms of which one I would do? Which yeah. one I would... I'll, I mean, i put Ragnarok above 2018, 2018 right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Janet, do you argue? No. And that's why I think it's a more interesting art con- argument to put God of War up against Last of Us. Do you mm-hmm. agree? I agree. Okay, good. All right. Good. I agree. You don't seem to think you're doubting me. Seems like you're trying to start something. Actually. Good. 
The way we did it is the way we decided we would do it back on episode 135, where we pitted The Last of Us Part 1 versus Part 2, and that means we were breaking it down across five categories. Who had the better journey? Who had the better gameplay? Who had the better characters? Who had the better pacing? Who had the better twists? Now, this is the same exact... Uh, this is the rubric, rubric we judged The Last of Us on. Okay. Okay. Got a problem with that? So what's the, uh, Maybe. What's the spoiler situation here? We are going spoilers hot. This is a spoilers okay. hot situation. You need, okay. We will have assumed you have beaten Ragnarok by here. If you haven't, we understand. You can come back to this episode later. But it feels like that would be a tough thing to, you know, argue. Are we going to I? Are we gonna immediately jump to the end of the show or to the game and be like, yes, guess what? When Kratos gets in the spaceship and Aloy's like, I really need your help. Oh, that was no. a fire part. Of that. I love that part. But also, I think there will be time codes because, of course, it's PlayStation updates and stuff. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if you want to skip this I part. I have it in here, topic of the show, God of War versus The Last of Us, and then I did hyphen hyphen. Spoilers hot for all games. If, you're, yeah. if you want, we, we can bring PlayStation updates up here. You can knock that out and then put it down there. We've never worried about it before. I mean, do you want to do that? I mean, that sounds like a fine way to do it. Okay, fine then. Everybody put a pin in tots. If you're at home, think about this. If you're watching, if you're listening, we're going to do PlayStation updates so you can get most of the show. And you'll do the whole thing and we'll come back to it. Yeah, so spoilers at the end. Yeah, okay. Fair enough to me. Janet, do you agree? Sure. All right, good. Thank you, Janet. Appreciate that. All right, then let's talk about this week in PlayStation. Let's start off talking about Monster Hunter Rise and about how that is coming to PlayStation uh, and Xbox Game Pass. But don't worry about Xbox Game Pass. We're just talking about PlayStation. Oh! This is Logan Plant at IGN. Monster Hunter Rise is making the move to all consoles, as the previously Switch exclusive game will soon be available on PlayStation 5 and PS4. Plus, Xbox Game Pass subscribers will play the game. Oh! Not, oh, put, put on PlayStation Plus. Uh, Capcom announced the game's multi-platform release is set for January 20th, 2023. Monster Hunter Rise originally launched exclusively for Switch in March 2021, before it came to Steam earlier this year. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, the major expansion already available on Switch and Steam, is coming to all platforms sometime next spring. The new versions of Monster Hunter Rise boast improved performance over the Switch release. Uh, 4K resolution and 60 FPS are supported on PS5, along with 3D audio. Ranged and shielded weapons will also make use of the DualSense's adaptive triggers on PlayStation 5. Uh, Greg, I know you were a big Monster Hunter World person, that's pro- that's and you didn't play much of Monster Hunter Rise. Is this going to bring you I didn't play game? any. I didn't play any. I downloaded it to the Switch and then just never got to it or whatever. Uh, this gets me excited. Uh, yeah, you know, I it was one of those where... I when I got my deck, a lot of people were like, "Oh man, you should pick this up too." But the deck landed at a time when we were playing a million games for review, and will that stop in the early part of next year? No, no. but I do hope that this will be enough to get me to jump in and go. I'm hoping you know friends will be playing with it, and I can jump in with them. Janet, are you going to play? Uh, probably not. I did yeah. actually play a little bit of Monster Hunter Rise on the Switch, um, and that was my first time playing Monster Hunter. It is one of those things where like it's just a lot to take in and then it's like you got to link up with somebody who's going to teach everything and like why isn't the game teach me everything isn't that bad and they're like no it's good somehow whatever like that's it's a it's a bit of a polarizing i think franchise to approach um it's big it's fast yeah yes it coming to playstation is a little appealing in the sense that again that's a wider player pool than it had before and like if isaiah for instance decides he wants to try and learn the game together i think that could be a fun experience and it's definitely one that I'd like to try out at some point because there is such a like extreme fandom there. And I know so many people that have that as like one of their favorite franchises of all time. Clearly there's an appeal. Um, I just don't know if this will be my entry point in. I'm kind of wondering when am I going to make that leap? Um, could it be this one? It's technically yes. Do I think it will be? Probably not, especially given again, next month it's like, all right, we're going to coming off the break like figuring out what's coming out this year oh wait everything's out now all of a sudden and and it's easy for it to get swept up um but i would like to at one point give the franchise a more thorough try what about you bless uh i really want to try this out uh and i'm right right now i'm trying to open up game informers list of like the, uh, i'm on it do you want to hear its competition yes do you want me to just read down the line of january Vengeful uh, yeah, january. guardian moon rider january 12th uh dragon ball z kakarot uh, January 13th. Uh, One Piece Odyssey, <laughs> January 13th. A Space for the Unbound, January 19th. Persona 4 Golden, uh, January 19th. Persona th- 3 Portable, January 19th. Uh, Fire Emblem, that's on Switch. Don't worry. Monster Hunter Rise, January 20th. Uh, I'm looking for other PlayStation games. Uh, Forspoken. It's a nerdy month. <laughs> Forspoken, January 24th. 
Dead Space Remake, motherfuckers, uh, January 27th. And then Age of Empires not on PlayStation. We have to worry about it. Yeah, so that is where things get hairy for me, right? Where most of those games, I'm not playing to play. Um, it's not until you get to Forspoken and Dead yeah. Space where I want to I want to play both of those games, right? And at the very least, okay. try them out. Um, and so I think those would be the things I would interrupt it, but I would hope that maybe by that time, hopefully maybe I get Monster Hunter Rise before that, unless it's one of those ones where it's like, Nah, it's just a port, so we're not going to give you review codes, which might, you know, which could oh, be the I case. think they'll still give you though. They're going to push it. I think okay. you got review codes for it. And that'd be my hope, too. My hope then would be that, like, if we got into it, which mm-hmm. is a big if, I know. Yeah. But if, if let's say it actually, all three of us get into it, and yes, Janet, you can bring Isaiah, all right? He can sure. be in it, too. Jen loved Worlds, and maybe we get Jen involved, too, but of course, somebody's got to watch this kid who doesn't need batteries. I digress. You've been involved. Hand him a controller. We got to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might be that thing where it's like, okay, cool. You do a mission, maybe two missions in Monster Hunter. You're grinding for a set of armor. You're going after a Rathalos. That's what you do for the night. Mm. You do that one mission, right? And like, all right, peace out. I'm going to go play for Spoken. I'm going to go play yeah. Dead Space. Yeah, and I mean, I, I hope I'm able to make that work because I want to make it work because Monster Hunter is a franchise that I've wanted to get into for a while. Sure. Um, back when I was playing Bloodborne, uh, what, in December 2020, I want to say, I remember streaming that with Imran, and Imran brought up like, yo, dude, I know you're loving the combat in Bloodborne and these Souls games so much. Do I have a game for you? You should check out Monster Hunter. And I was like, all right, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Um, and with when Rise came out, it was that similar thing of there are other games we were playing, it's too busy, didn't have the time for it. And then it came out to PC and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe now, but then yeah, the same thing of like, I don't have the time. I'll just like wait for it to come somewhere else. And so now it's coming to PlayStation. And I think this is my biggest opportunity, mainly because, you know, I imagine that. This might be tempting for you to get into. Janet might possibly want to get into it. I know Kevin played Monster Hunter World Enjoyed as well, so maybe he gets into it. Maybe we're able to have this wave of people playing on PlayStation. And then also it being a platform that I'm maybe the most comfortable in in terms of booting up and playing, right? Like, this is my home platform. And that's the other thing, too, where it's like the majority of your time's on it, right? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know, you know, are we PlayStation fanboys or whatever? Uh, I think we're just PlayStation focused. Right? Yeah. So it's so much easier of... When I, when I think about sitting down at, tonight to play games, it's going to be I sit down, I hit the uh, dual sense right, and I get all my games on my crossbar, and I'm like, what am I going to play tonight? When it's just that extra step of, well, it's over on the PC, or it's in the Switch that's in the dock, but it's disconnected because I was using the HDMI and something else. It's just that one step where I'm like, well, I'm already here, I'm already doing this, and I already have such a backlog that I'd rather be here. Yeah. So I would love to get into Monster Hunter Rise, and I've, I've heard great things about it. I think Imran did um, impressions on Kind of Funny when it came out, yeah. and he, he had very glowing thoughts on it. Dude, so. everybody who seemed to play it loved it, and that, that'd be the hope of, like, all right, cool. It, the, Monster Hunter Rise specifically is such a community-focused game and having people to play with. That that was one of my things why I don't think, even when I downloaded it on Switch, I downloaded it on a, um, a, a trip up to Quebec, right, where I had time to play games, but it was that problem of, oh, well... Everybody, Imran, Zach Ryan, go down the list of people that I knew were super into it. They've already moved on. They played it for a long mm-hmm. time and then they were done and moved on to something else. So it wasn't like it was, there's a zeitgeist to it. And so if it lands on PlayStation, like you're saying, there's a group of us into it. That could be all we need. 1000%. All right, let's talk about games coming to PlayStation Plus in December. These are essential games. You're getting Mass Effect Legendary Edition for PS4, Battle Mutant for PS5 and PS4, and Divine Knockout for PS5 Ooh. and PS4. You ready to. Knock out some people into divinity, Janet. <laughs> Damn, um, that was a terrible one. You stretched, I, I stretched that one. That one. I apologize. Yeah, it's um. I mean, it's the class. If you don't have Mass Effect Legendary Edition, I mean, that's the great pickup of the month of for course. me. Nashes and Divine Knockout I already have Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and then Bio Mutant was real rough. I played like four hours of it when it came out, and it was not good. So obviously t- redeem it if you want to. If you're one of those people obsessed with, you gotta redeem everything just to feel like you're paying for something. Go ahead, but it's not it's not a good time. So it's like not that exciting for me personally, but for the general audience, one banger is more than you get on some other months. So like an okay month. Yeah, and like with Mass Effect Legendary Edition, you're basically getting three bangers right there, right? With all the the Mass Effect games. Sure. So I think that's a that's, you, that's a good one. To are grab. you gonna play Divine Knockout at all? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've seen gameplay of it. it. It's like a fighting game. It's like an arena fighter. Launching uh, directly into PlayStation Plus, this third-person platform fighter adds a whole new dimension to the genre. Damage enemies to make them vulnerable, then smash them out of the arena in a unique third-person perspective. Oh, weird. I wonder where they got that. Choose from one of the ten playable gods to hurl boulders as Hercules or wield Mjolnir as Thor. Then battle across diverse arenas with their own mechanics to master. Play three v three arcade mode with friends to explore a variety of game modes, or duke it out in hardcore 1v1 and 2v2 du- duels dko 
features cross-play and cross-progression. The Founders Edition unlocks DKO and bonus content for the game, plus a DKO-inspired skin in Smite. I have nothing to say about time? this, but someone uh, in this video right here uh, has the name Looking Good Joker, and that's a, that's a good Persona oh, reference. Oh, right yeah, that's a good reference. Nice, good I mean, this game looks fun. Like It looks decently fun, and it's one that I'll play, I think, if I didn't have anything else I was doing, but there's a lot of games that are out right now. Sure, and but this is the way we talk about the benefit of PlayStation Plus yeah. and Xbox Game Pass, right? Where it's like, all right, cool, if we were on a fixed budget, if we, were, uh, we had bought PlayStation Plus to play a couple of games online or whatever, to get something like this that launches day and date with it in a Fall Guys kind of method... I don't think this is going to turn heads. This doesn't look as unique as something like Fall Guys or, you know, Knockout City or whatever, you know, multiplayer when you want to rumble versus something mm -hmm. goes on that way where you could have it could have a moment. But I do think having the influx of free players via PlayStation Plus could be helpful. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of Hunter's Arena Legends because that's another one that came out to PS Plus last year. Uh, and it was another one where it was kind of below the radar. And I think it had a PC audience before, but I saw that and I was like, oh, this game looks interesting. I played it for a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, that was a fun, fun couple of days of playing this game. And then I went on and did other stuff. Uh, I think this might, this game looks like it might fit in that sphere. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think it looks fun. Like I would play it if I just didn't have anything else I was doing. Okay. Fair enough. And then yeah, Bob Eden, I don't care. And the Mass Effect is a great <laughs> Bob Eden, I don't, I don't care. care. <laughs> uh, and the Mass Effect, yeah, that's a, that's a great pickup for anybody that doesn't have those ones. Uh, we got one more for PlayStation updates. One more time. Hideo Kojima has further teased his next game with new logos. Uh, this is Jordan Midler at Video Games Chronicle. Hideo Kojima has further teased what's expected to be his next game by posting several logos that will seemingly be featured in the title. The director tweeted, quote, start a new journey, end quote, with an image of several logos attached. One of the logos has been used regularly as Kojima has been revealing actors that will be a part of the project. So far, the director has confirmed that Shio uh, Shiori... Yes, Shiori, Kutsuna, and Elle Fanning will star in the game, although the roles that they'll play is currently unknown. It's believed that Kojima is currently working on at least two projects. One is thought to be a game called Overdose, footage of which has seemingly leaked online several times this year. The second game could be a, a sequel to Death Stranding. Uh, in response to Kojima's Twitter post, fans have been quick to point out some similarities between the logos and the Bridges Company logo featured in Death Stranding. Janet Garcia, what do you make of this? I feel like we're going to either we're seeing something of this at the Game Awards or the Game Awards is teasing something that's not going to happen because uh, as people bring out in the uh, the trogs here, uh, <laughs> there's a reply from the Game Awards and I think from Keeley separately, which is funny because I'm like, isn't this the same? <laughs> it's coming from the person? same house. <laughs> but, you know, who among us hasn't done that, right? I'm out here quote tweeting articles I wrote from other accounts. It's like, I, I get it. Um, so I hope that we see more of that, um, you know, this coming next week. But uh, I think it's exciting. I mean, anything that Kojima is working on, I'm automatically a little bit interested in, though I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd, I, I'd say I'm a Kojima stan, but I think I had, I had a stan moment in my life. Who hasn't, right? Like, I think at one point. <laughs> Who hasn't been in a dedicated self, relationship with Hideo Kojima? <laughs> we've all had a really strong feeling for Hideo Kojima at some point, um, playing games over the years. Admittedly, I still have not finished that Stranding. I played a little bit of it last year, around this time, actually, as like a, like a like a holiday thing like i'm the delivery man like santa that was the whole idea that's like as far as the concept went did you but, but did you put sam porter bridges in the santa hat i don't i don't think i could at the time okay. or like I, I was like i just started it like which you you already know the beginning of that stranding is like mostly you're just watching a movie which is fine by me because i'm like i don't want to do anything anyway so i'm cool to so we're sitting here <laughs> we're hanging out why not um which also i'd like to ask you guys should i finish that game like do you think i that's a that's required reading in your opinion cool. interesting question how far did you get in death Stranding again oh not very far i would i'd probably just restart it because i was like four hours in so i i not played it all the way through uh earlier this year and i fucking loved it but it's also one that i understand why people don't love it right like it's kind of it's a game that pushes back and it's also a game that like can be boring and also just has like a lot of weird shit in the story um i don't know like I don't know if I'd say I it's required walking. reading. If you like walking, <laughs> and if you if you like that portion of the game, then I'd say yeah, like go ahead play through the, through, through the rest because like it is it is for sure a not not a walking sim, I guess a delivery sim, right? I think it leans sure. into the fact that it is hey, there's a weird genre. It's not an action game. It's not. It doesn't have the pacing you'd expect from like a typical AAA game of that ilk. It is a delivery sim, and you kind of have to be into the delivery elements. You kind of have to be into like the balancing left and right, and you know trying to figure out what cargo you're going to fit and how difficult you want to make it. Yeah. yeah. How are you going to stack it? How difficult do you want to make your journey? How much do you want to take? You got to be into that process. And if you are, I think it, it is a really fun time. I think the game 
the game, I think, has good uh, design around the delivery portions of the game. And then the story is a whole different thing of like, are you into a weird story? Are you into a Kojima story? Are you into a story with long ass cutscenes? You're Mario, and I'm Princess Beach. Yeah, like there's I did see that weird part shit already. In there. So. Uh, but if you if you vibe with that stuff, then for sure, I think you're gonna have a fantastic time. But it's definitely not a game I would say everybody needs to play. Yeah, that's where I mean, I, I also love Death Stranding at the time, like, I, and I still ha- think fondly on it. And every so often, I go, man, I'd like to get back and platinum that. But the problem is that I'm so far removed from it that I would have to start it over, I think, to actually get my head wrapped around the mechanics. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but like, I don't think yeah, it's something you need to stop everything to go play. And because what I what I've taken away from Death Stranding isn't the story stuff, which I enjoyed at the time or whatever, and performances from, you know, I, I quoted a lot of like, I might be fragile, but I'm not fragile, or whatever that, however she heard it was, right? <laughs> not fragile. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like, I did really love the, all right, how am I getting up this mountain? How am I balancing my stuff? I'm using the time juice to make my stuff not get broke Once down. you start with the zip lines and like start getting that process going, oh man, it was so satisfying for me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Janet, it might be one of those where the, you know, the boat's left and you have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited for uh, whatever he's about to tease, right? Like me and Tim talked about the idea of what if it is, what if he shows up at Game Awards with two games? What if it is Death Stranding 2 and uh, this Overdose game? Like that'd be crazy to happen. And I don't expect that to happen, but I don't know which one we're about to see is the other thing. You know, based on the logos that he's tweeting out, I do see similarities between those logos and the Death Stranding stuff. But also maybe that is just a Kojima Productions thing of they like good brand design. Like Metal Gear Solid had a lot of, interesting like branding things within the world itself that that was conveyed like i think that studio is a really good studio when it comes to you know visual design and like the what they do with um oh i can't remember the name of the the dude that does like the art for kojima um i can never pronounce it ah oh, man i totally lost the name but yeah like you know they they lean heavy with that stuff so i wouldn't be surprised if the logos we're seeing are actually for overdose or for a different game maybe um, three games Oh my we think God. they're all one thing and they're three things. That'd be, I mean, that would make sense for the bridge logo, right? Because there is a logo that looks like a, a drawbridge in and there. And in the Trog chat, uh, like no Yoshi Shinkawa, thank you, Madog. Okay? Madog, Madog Nick96 says the middle logo was in Death Stranding, at least the director's cut. So I guess one game will be Death Stranding too. <sighs> it's three games. It could be. That's fucking wild if it is. Because yeah. one of them is an octopus. And like, I, I don't know if there's an octopus in Death, Death Stranding, but I'm sure there's octopus. There's like, weird technically things, right? Yeah. Wasn't there? Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. I can't picture exactly what it was, but I, mm. I think there are technical things in Death Stranding. Stop. That's the, the other thing, too, here is like, I think it's a fun story for PSW because we know Kojima's working on something for Xbox. Is, is it going to be an mm. Xbox exclusive thing that he reveals? Oh. Is it going to be, is Overdose an Xbox thing? Sure. Right? Or is it like, Overdose is a survival horror thing. Death Stranding 2 is also working on. And then the Xbox thing is a third thing. I don't know. I don't, don't want to be hitting here my conspiracy theory bag, but. It's hard to believe Game Awards is next week. Yeah, one week from now, it all changes. I don't. Six I days don't, from now, it all changes. Oh, it's Friday. It'll have already. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So changed. next Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Sorry. I'm not good at math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to be fascinated to see what happens, what leaks, what announcements there are, and where we go from there. Oh, yeah. We shall see. For now, let's see about some PlayStation picks. Of course, this is where we talk about what's coming out this week and what each of us have been playing. Uh, to start off with the picks, though, uh, this week on PlayStation, you're getting Last Days of Las- Lazarus, uh, Sable, uh, Soccer Story for PS5 and PS4, The Night Witch for PS5 and PS4, Front Mission, actually, no, that's not coming to PlayStation, uh, Gundam Evolution for PS5 and PS4, Eastward, not for PlayStation. That's an Xbox. I'm reading directly from Game Informer because I forgot to copy and paste it. Uh, Blessing did Games Daily right into the shit list for Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Shoved some pizza in his face and ran to this. So, yeah. Yes, thank you. New Joe and Mac. Uh, Are you talking Ninja. about next week or what's out this week? I forget how we do this. because This what came out this week. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. you're also got Midnight Suns. You also got Callisto Protocol. Yes. The yeah. bigger ones. Gotham Knights, Heroic Assault. Don't forget. Of, of who can free and also the Avengers DLC. Uh, Nijo and Mac, Caveman Ninja, uh, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, Chapter Two Re- Retribution is apparently out for PlayStation VR. Is that right? It's definitely we're on, on top of requests, I guess, since it's PlayStation VR and PlayStation VR Two. That would make sense. And yeah, then the ones you mentioned, Marvel's Midnight Suns, and then Need for Speed Unbound uh, is out for PlayStation Five, December second. And that's it for PlayStation picks. Okay. Greg, while you look up that thing, yeah, Janet. What you pick to play on PlayStation this week? I finally beat Roller Drome. So I did go back. I'm trying to clean up the last couple, thank you, the last couple of games that I can get in under the wire before end of the year stuff uh, comes to a head. But yeah, I beat it. I will say 
it was tough getting back into because I took such a long break between and it's a fairly challenging game and I was near the end of the game. So I was in the semifinals, the last, you know, four levels of however many levels the game is. And I was getting my ass kicked for quite some time, just trying to relearn everything. Like I had to look up like guides, like tips and tricks here, like how to take on different, because you have different weapons that you can swap between. So like some might be better than others for certain enemy types. And there's just like a lot to keep track of in Roller Drome in general. That being said, still loved it. Uh, I'm really glad that I finished it. A little bit less hot on it now that I have finished it, which is oh. also why I try to get through stuff when I feel like I really want to form an opinion on it. Not that you can form an opinion without beating it, but, of you course. know, just to be more thorough. Um, yeah, just because I feel like maybe it gets a little too hard in terms of especially in terms of uh, level length, because there's a bunch of challenges per level. Um, and one of the aspects of challenges include like a par time like beat the level under par, which is whatever average time they feel like takes or a decent you know, amount of time to, to sure. beat it. And that number gets bigger as you go further into the game to the point where I'm like, mm, this is kind of like, it, it just becomes a, a, a test of stamina at a certain point. And for me, when it comes to difficulty, I am a bigger fan of quick hit, lots of repeats. You know, it's why I love stuff like Celeste, Super Meat Boy, because of the fact that those are just platformers. Um, stuff like that, where I can get in, get out, retry and get really good at it. And generally Roller Drum does fit that bill. But I do think in the later levels, because they become so lengthy, it starts to wear on me a little bit where I wish they maybe just made the approach the difficulty a little bit different for my personal taste and what I think would work in a game like this. Um, but yeah, still really recommend it. Still really loved it. Um, still has potential to be in my top 10 of the year, but I got to I got to think about it more in comparison to other titles. But glad I finished it. Not sure about the platinum. You know, it was funny because someone someone tweeted me or like the, in the comments, they were like, I don't know if you can get that platinum. Like, it's pretty hard. I'm like, what are you trying to say? You know, like, well, hold on. I'm pretty good at this game. And then I looked and I'm like, oh, my God, were they right? So anyway, I don't even know if I replied to this person. Would, <laughs> you got all offended, right. looked at it. You're like, ah, you know, what? I, let it go. Let it go. Yeah, I'm sorry that I... Um, you're right. I was. It's really. It's really freaking hard. I. I still am living it on my um, dash because I would like to go back and finish it. But even with the assists, like I don't know if I can hit some of those higher scores. But uh, it's a blast either way. So glad to have that done. Ready to move on to other things. Yeah, I. I feel you on the the difficulty. I like. Close, or I was gonna say close pro call. Roller drone, like by the, by the time I got to the end of it, and you do hit okay. those uh, those difficult uh, levels toward the end of it, I think it has a difficulty that. I don't like in terms of how messy it feels like the combat from the enemies, like the shot, the enemy, the shots from the enemies feel very magnetic to your character, which is the whole point, right? Like you want to dodge roll out of the, their line of sight uh, and kind of keep that, keep that thing going. But like at some point, at a certain point when you get through that game, it is dodge roll, dodge roll, dodge roll, because you have all these enemies aiming at you and it is like, all right, I want to dodge roll while also keeping my combo while also doing tricks to reload my gun. And also I'm like trying to keep track of the enemy so I can take them down. But now I'm dodge rolling five times in a row. And I think, it doesn't but, feel very designed difficulty. It yes. feels like they just kind of threw a lot just to make it feel more difficult. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it, it feels a little bit messy uh, when it comes to some of that stuff. But it is still a really fun time. And like it's still a game that I'll recommend anybody check out, if, especially if you if you see it and you're like, oh, man, it's a roller skating game or oh, man, it's a, it's a you know, arena shooter. If either, that's, if either of those things appeals to you, then I'm like, yeah, for sure. Check out Roller Drome. It's a fantastic game, even though, yeah, I think like I totally feel where, where you're coming from, Janet, in terms of some of the difficulty there. I got two games that I can talk about. I've Wait, been what? playing a lot of games on PlayStation for my PlayStation oh, picks. Oh, every stay out of his way, I'm everybody. Saying, this yeah, guy's big time way. gamer, dude. Look your out, fucking gamer, pro gamer. Uh, of course, we played through Callisto Protocol. The reviews yep. up as a kind of funny games cast. Um, but I've also been playing Need for Speed and Dark Pictures. Which one do you guys want to hear about? I feel like Dark Pictures. Okay, yeah, yeah. Dance is Dark Pictures. I was gonna say Need for Speed because I feel like we talked about Dark Pictures on one of the shows this week in a more mm. finalized sense. Whereas yeah. Need for Speed, you had an opening impression. I wanted to see if you're still playing it. That's true. I'll start. Uh, you know what? Here's the daily double. You do do both. Need for Speed. I'll do. I'll do the daily double. I'll do uh, Dark Pictures real quick because I don't have much more to say aside from the sure. what I said before about it. Uh, which is, you know, started started it off. Of course, it's super massive. It's another entry into the Dark Pictures series. It is Dark Pictures: The Devil in Me. The premise of it is more uh uh saw like of like you are trying to survive this murder hotel scenario and i've i've been all in on the premise of it since they announced it since we saw that first trailer at the end of the last dark pictures game i've been very excited about this one uh i think when it comes to the premise and when it comes to the story and the characters 
I've been enjoying my time with it so far. I'm about halfway through the game. I've been playing with uh, Yami, who's always my co-op partners, uh, partner in, in these games. And it's been very entertaining to go through the story and kind of get a, get the hints of like, you know, you go through the prologue and the prologue is always the thing of, all right, here's setting up the scenario that you're going to end up finding yourself in in like the future when these characters return to the scenario. Uh, and like as soon as we hit it, I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun time. And so far, it's been a really fun time. I'll say this is the scariest um, really? Dark Pictures game. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you maybe didn't say that before. Yeah, okay. yeah and maybe. It, so what is that? Jump scares? Is that it is jump scares? It is uh, the way they set the tone in the atmosphere at times where there's one scene where I'm playing as a character who has asthma uh, and like she is like freaking out in and in, like in this situation because and I'll, I'll set it up this way. Right. You're playing as a film crew, essentially, that like films documentaries. You go to this like this hotel and you're trying to get like the interesting scoop on like what is what goes on at this hotel like what's the like what's happening here what's the, what? the interesting scoop i just like i just like yeah. you're trying to get the interesting scoop uh, <laughs> you're on a first date like what do you do oh, i'm a documentarian i go on i try to get the interesting scoop. <laughs> I, look, I look for the interesting scoops uh but you end up getting essentially like abandoned at this hotel and um the, the interesting interesting thing about this dark pictures game is that I feel like they've taken the most steps toward trying to experiment and trying to innovate with their series in this game more than any of their other games because okay. it is the thing where each of the characters kind of has their own inventory system that is like you have uh, like are you actually going into your inventory and moving things around or no it is it's uh, your D pad uh, and so like you every every character seemingly has like an item on the on the up D pad of hey, this character has a camera because they're the photographer on the crew. This character has a directional microphone because they're the audio person. Um, and so it's stuff like that. And I, it seems, it, I assume that you're picking up stuff. You know, it's that thing of I'm playing part of it, Yami's playing part of it, sure, so sure, I think sure, he's sure, experienced sure. it in a different way. Um, but yeah, you have items that you can like take out and use in different ways. And so I'm in a scene with the girl who, who has the directional mic and it's this thing of she's, she gets woken up and she's like walking through these hallways of the hotel and like shit is creepy, right? You're hearing crazy sounds, like you're hearing a TV uh, uh, with maybe somebody crying off the TV. Or are maybe you in doing real life. like this thing? So you're like actually hearing, like as you turn different. Yes. Things. Okay. Yeah. So like I bust out the directional microphone and I'm walking through, and yeah, I'm hearing like doors opening and closing, and like I'm hearing like footsteps and like pitter pattering, and I'm hearing a TV, and I'm hearing somebody crying, and then the more I walk forward, the more like that shit starts to get more insane. And I'm like, this is really scary, and I'm telling Yami, I'm like. Yo, I'm there's some really scary shit going on. And Yami's like, no, there's scary shit going on on my side, right? Both of us are like terrified in our own ways. Um, and yeah, like the ways in which I think the game builds tension and horror uh, in those ways, I think are are really good and take re really good advantage of what the premise is, which again is like you've been you're stuck in this murder hotel and there is somebody who's seemingly masterminding this whole murder game that they're playing. Um, and it's been it's been very entertaining from that aspect. The thing that's bummed me out about this Dark Pictures game is that it's very buggy, uh, especially yeah. in co-op, where I've experienced many bugs of characters popping in and out, characters being stuck in certain animations where uh, Yami's character had their camera out and could not put it away for some reason, but then like she would actually take it out in-game, and then they'll make them put it away. So like they're doing weird actions where they're climbing up a cliff, but their camera's out, and so it, it looks really unnatural. There are times where Yami's character just got stuck in geometry, and we had to restart the um, the checkpoint to like get her out of it. Um, and yeah, it's just like crazy shit like that that's been happening very uh, often. Have you beaten it yet? Not yet. Okay. No, I'm only about uh, halfway through it. Do you know how long it is? No, I assume it's probably the similar length as any other dark pictures thing. Okay, Madeline Stanley says she's put seven hours in. Mm. I, that sounds right for like one section player. left. She says, "Okay, so like eight, nine. Yeah, because I found that playing the game co-op usually is way quicker than single sure. player. Um, and so I'm used to playing like four hours of this game by the time oh, I finish it. Man, Madeline says because uh, my hope here, of course, is a dark pictures fan. Is that it's just mainly co-op stuff, but Madeline writes in the chat live on patreon.com slash kind of funny says one of my saves got corrupted where everyone sounds like they were underwater and I had to start a new save. Oh no. Yeah. And that's the thing is this game. I might is, wait. I might wait. Just let I'll, it sit there and marinate. I'll say wait, may possibly uh um, and hope it gets patched because yeah, it's riddled with bugs. And then also the a lot of the gameplay stuff they add, right? So I mentioned the inventory stuff. There's a lot more traversal and like uh like climbing and climbing not in like the uncharted way, but climbing is like you're mantling over things. Yeah. And, it's a way more mobile game than the previous games. Dark Pictures games are very usually you are walking kind of slowly through environments and picking things up and looking at them and then just in, interacting with things in that way. 
there's a run button where you're zooming through levels, but like the run animation is so weird because they've not made a run anim animation like this before. And so mm -hmm. like you're running and your character's arms are like too close to them and like they're doing just the most awkward jogs ever. Uh, so there's stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like, yeah, it's it's an interesting direction like uh, for one of their games, right? Because it feels like somebody at their at their studio played Uncharted and they're like, hey, other video games, your characters are jumping all over the place. Can we like make it so that our characters move faster through the environments so that we can make bigger environments and stuff? But yeah. I don't know. Like it's a it's a different direction that I don't know. I don't know that I like. I, I and they might be able to build to somewhere with it, but I think in this game so far that stuff's not working. And so from a story level, I'm enjoying it from a gameplay and just performance buggy level not like it's it's pretty upsetting i would love to get information we couldn't get i'm sure but per behind the closed doors of what bandai namco thinks of dark pictures anthology because mm. this whole thing of like you know hey we're gonna do nine of them this is the end of season one yada yada and none of them have been met with oh my god this is a 10 out of 10 this is the new standard yada yada, yada. none of them I would argue House of Ashes, but I know even that's uh, controversial, has reached until Dawn Heights, right? Or even, you know, The Quarry, which came out this year from them uh, at 2K, though. I wonder if Bandai is still like, well, this deal makes enough money that it makes sense, or if they're ever going to be like, you know what, like, let's stop making these. Yeah. Or let's stop publishing them. It's funny, because after playing this one, I'm like, I don't even know what I want anymore. Like, I'm looking forward to their... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking forward to their next <laughs> one. <laughs> Like I'm looking forward to 1920 or whatever that game is called. It's not called 1920, but like the space game that yeah, they're yeah, making yeah. 3080, uh, 8030, 8020. Uh, I just know that there's a space game. I, I yeah, have. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a weird name and then a number. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one, but also I'm like, if if we keep getting these where it is, if it feels half baked or it feels rushed, then I'm like, no, take your time. Like I don't need these yearly, especially if you're see, giving me a But that's where I get into time. like what the deal with Namco or Bandai Namco. Yeah. Of like that must be in their contract with them, and they must be, and, I, and they just refuse to take a foot off the gas. <laughs> like, yeah, of course we'd. I'm sure they'd like we'd love to see the quarry, but or have our own quarry. But I'm sure well we spent years on the quarry for 2K and had a bigger budget and had a bigger support team than what we have here. But yeah, the other game, uh, Need for Speed Unbound. Right. I've been playing. Uh, been if, you, if you missed it on Games Daily, Blessing talked a lot of shit about Need for Speed. I did. I did. Said I, I did he so didn't want shit. it to exist. He wanted burnout more. And then the next day, tail between his legs, like, this Need for Speed's pretty funny. I don't know if I said I did one Need for Speed. He's like, exist. I'm so sorry, everybody. He I just, bowed down. I'm just saying, give me burnout. And I still stand by it. Give me burnout. I miss burnout. Burnout's a fucking masterpiece of a franchise. I said it. Uh, that said, this Need for Speed game, really good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. I actually, you know what? I'm glad you gave it to me. Um, you know, it is. I, it's well, it's piggybacking off of I think what Need for Speed has been lately, especially with Need for Speed Heat, which is it's open world. That cartoon it is, stuff's so cool. That's cel shaded. And that's the, the thing that initially got beautiful. me. The animation is really cool. Uh, I like the style of it. I think it is additive to the experience. I thought it was going to be gimmicky. Uh, so far, I'm proving myself wrong. I'm really liking a lot of those visual elements. The game looks good. The game runs really well. Um, it's like it's open world, right? And it is. It feels to me like a mix between Need for Speed Underground and like Burnout. Let's say Paradise, just in terms of uh, you're getting boost. You are uh, go doing the near mi near misses with other vehicles. You're driving into oncoming traffic. You are uh, you know getting air on jumps and stuff to try yeah. and build up your boost meter so you can go faster. But then like yeah, if you hit a wall, you are then uh, uh, crashing. You right, like through the windshield. Yeah, like it's that kind of racing game, and that's the stuff that I like from Burnout. But for the Need for Speed elements, there's a story here. There are characters. It's not like, you know, a story of the year contender by any means. But I think it is, like, enough to where I'm like, actually, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes because it is uh, you are uh, homies with, like, these folks who own a garage and you are doing these underground street races. And, like, it's it's the kind of underground street races where, like, the police don't like them and, <laughs> and they start chasing after you, you know? Like, you know, those, those kind of underground races, James. Classic need for speed. Classic need for speed. Um, but then it's the thing of, you know, things go awry early on and one of your friends, like, takes your car because they're getting, like, chased by the police and you're like, oh, that's my car and they're gone, right? And the next time you see your car, somebody shows up to it, uh, shows up with it at a meet and you're like, wait, that's my car. How'd they get my car? And like now it's like, okay, I need to I need to get back into the game because I'm trying to figure out like what's going on here. Um, you just file a police report though, right? No, because it's all, it's all illegal, Greg. If I follow a, a police report, I'm snitching on myself. Along turn, with turn it on its head though. You know what I mean? Cops <sighs> will never see it coming. Maybe uh, you're on the inside now. Snitches get stitches, Greg. Snitches get stitches. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, the story stuff is interesting. The, um, the flow of the game essentially has like this day-night cycle that I like where you start off 
you have a calendar that you're going through, right? Where the big event happens on Saturday that you're trying to build up to, right? And for that big event, usually you need certain kinds of vehicles and you need a certain amount of money to then buy in, buy your way into that event. So throughout the week, you are doing activities to try and work your, 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 your way there. During the day, like on, you start on Monday, right? During the day, it is... All right, you can do a, you can do these races that are out in the open world. Once you do a race, each race has a buy-in where it is you pay a thousand dollars, you might be able to get three thousand dollars to get first place. The lower you get, the less money you you get. You might lose money if you're in like last sure. place or something. You do those races. The more races you do, the more heat you're gaining. And so like when you gain heat, hence the name. Yeah, but that's the name of the last one. This one is Unbound. Um, How do I get Unbound? I don't know yet. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> we haven't got that part of the story. That part. What's no, binding that mechanic you right now? will be in the next Need for Speed. Game. There you go. There you go. If it, I, I believe Heat did have this Heat system, but it's still somewhat new to me. Um, so yeah, like the more the more you do these races during the day, the more Heat you're getting, and then after the day comes night, Greg, <laughs> and night happens, and then you get more races, and like you have to you do these races, and you have to like come back to your safe house to then bank the money that you made off of those races to then buy cars and buy parts for your to, for your cars to upgrade to then hopefully by the end of the week you have like the vehicle and the money that you need to then enter the the big event what's up greg uh yeah i'm sorry greg miller small town playstation lawyer and mm -hmm. kind of slash journalist um my question here is do you make a character this sounds more like story driven of like oh that's my car where'd my car come from are you just, mm -hmm. do you pick a character or is it just are you a talking car you you have a character the character is like an anime character, funny enough. Like it's funny because you like you have these cars that are realistic looking cars, but then you look inside the car and it's this anime <laughs> character sitting in there. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, but also kind of cool at the same time. Cause it's like they look almost spider verse -y. like not as great as spider verse -y, the, Yeah, the like, art looks like that, right? The way yeah. like the stuff coming off the tires. It has like that kind of style to it. Uh and you can you do create your character. It's not deep customization. Sure, sure, the customization sure. is very basic. And so I assume it is you pick a like, you know, a guy or, or like a woman presenting voice. To then be your character, gotcha. right? I don't think you're really a. Uh, actually, no. You might have a choice of voices. I forget. I didn't really care about the character creation in this one that much. But yeah, like. So no critique of the hair. No, I like I like the hair that I got. Okay. In fact, somebody on Twitter made me in the game. Oh, made me. Uh, and like I was like, actually, you know what? That's not a bad. That's not bad for as as limited as I'd say the character creation tools are. Yeah. Uh, I think they're fun enough that it's like, yeah, you can make a pretty cool looking character. You're not gonna make Greg Miller one for one, but somebody made me pretty accurately which was actually pretty surprising um but yeah i'm enjoying this game i'm having fun with it i can't wait to play more of it i as people were asked about the soundtrack i'll be honest i turned the music off and i started listening to the burnout 3 soundtrack while playing this game oh no was it, is the soundtrack bad though i don't think Plus it's bad he wants it's, something he just wants something very specific that and also like i have spotify that's my that's this might be a blessing show this might be a conversation for here another day but have we reached the point when it comes to licensed soundtracks in games like these where it's like What's the point anymore? We got Spotify. Just turn off music. Listen to your Spotify. That's what I. That's what I've been doing. I just listen to my Spotify playlist. Yeah. But I feel like you're just uh, you're finally catching on to what I used to do back in the day. Xbox 360. You could burn your. Uh, yeah. You could burn your music onto the 360 and then uh, play it while while uh, playing whatever game. That's what I would do with See, like Madden and stuff back in the day. I think it was Burnout Paradise where you because on PS3 I used to save music to my PS3. In fact, I was very upset when the PS4 came out and you couldn't really save your music to the PS4 and then like play your music uh, from the PS4. On the PS3, I think Burnout Paradise had a station that was your saved music mm. that you could listen to. Yeah. And that was my shit. That's I always dope. loved That's that dope. shit. FIFA had a similar See, thing. I like that. I, like th I, I would prefer that. Yes. We have yeah. a way to integrate your music if you want to, or your, in the future, your Spotify playlist or whatever, yeah. but like where it's a radio station unto itself, that way you could hear new stuff. Dangerous, uh, oh my, yeah, doing it that that way I think would be dope as fuck. Dangerous Driving has a feature where you do integrate your Spotify playlist. So like you press L1 and it goes on to the next song or whatever. Sure, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. is an actual in-game thing. And that was kind of a, them accounting for the fact that they didn't have a soundtrack. And so like Dangerous Driving. Hey man, smart <laughs> way to get around it. Smart Dangerous way to... Driving, rough video game, but it did have a decent idea there with actually integrating your Spotify soundtrack. I would like to see way more games do that. We should figure out a way that, that you know, like you... It's a similar situation. They can't mm -hmm. afford to license music, so they do that. But then the default music on the radio station is just our podcasts. So mm -hmm. if you don't have anything to link to, you just have to listen to old podcasts that's talking about whatever. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, good. Yeah. Make that happen. Get out there and make that happen. Uh, I was boring this week. Uh, I just played Callisto Protocol. Uh, like you already said, the review's up on the Gamescast. You can go get it over there. You, me, and Mike all gave it a four out of five, and the world agrees. <laughs> oh, wait, what's that? Were you surprised? When you saw the reviews? Because I was, was very surprised. It wasn't that I was... Yeah, I heard you on Games Daily today. It wasn't that I was surprised of 
them. Yes. I, overall, yes, I was surprised because like our entire panel was like, is it a three or is it a five? Right. And we all four. came down. I'm sorry. Yes. Is it a three or is it a four? Right. And we all were like, it's a four. It's a great game. When I describe it, it's great. Blah, blah, blah. But the fact that we were there, I'm like, well, clearly this game is going to get seven, six fives. You know what I mean? And then to see like GameStop gave it a, a flat five. five. I was like, fuck, man. And it's like, it's really fast. I These are the kind of reviews I love where it is this like whoosh, smattering of scores where it's just like you can find any different score you can believe. And people are saying, they like certain things that other people are saying they fucking hate. Other people are like, oh, man, it feels so much Dead Space. I love that. Other people are like, it feels too much like Dead Space. There's no new ideas. It's like, wow, this is a fascinating uh, review. But, yeah, I was like, I was I was caught off guard that it was so polarizing. I would have yeah. thought most people would have been right there with us, right? Of like, okay, cool. This is a seven to eight, seven, eight. six, you know, six, five, somewhere in there, like right in that that meaty, like it's not a perfect 10, but it's, it's whatever. But, yeah, some of the people who are just like, no, this game fucking sucks. I was yeah. like, damn. Like, wow. Yeah, but I, it's like, like I thought we were being mean to it <laughs> when I when we all the review. I was like, man, we're giving a lot of our critiques, yeah. but certainly like people are. This isn't going to be the wide view of it, and yeah, yeah like I and I don't. It's, it's the interesting thing of, you know, the game I think presents so polished. If you're playing on console, maybe not if you're playing on PC. Yeah, I saw. That. Um, it is very like it's a very good looking game. It's a very well running game. Like I, uh, the game has a lot of style to it, right? I like the visual the visual design of it so much. I think a lot of the critiques just come down to like the game design of it and how I think it kind of gets in its way sometimes with this combat and like, and um, the, well, that was, the survival horror. That stuff. was the thing, right? Where I, I expected even, and after the tutorial, the initial tutorial of the melee, I was like, oof, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Yeah. And then I fell in love with it. Then I was like, oh shit, I actually really do enjoy this and upgrade, like, you know, not to tread the same water, but like spent all my points originally upgrading my riot stick. So I'm just, you know, beat or stun baton where I'm just beating the hell out of people with the melee. Right. And I was like, oh, this dodging is actually fun. This is actually unique. This is a cool, punch out or fighting game way to do this like you talked about in the review and so to see people who are like it is clunky and i hate it it was like oh like i can see that i can mm. i can see where it's like if you were looking for a more one-to-one -one, i'm hitting the thing i'm hitting the guy i'm dying like i you want your own dodge roll like a i get where that you'd be like oh well this feels different but i like that that's how it felt i, I, I it's what we said in the review right where mm -hmm. everything in this game was a decision and whether you agree or disagree with the decision, there's plenty of the decisions in there I don't agree with. Whether you is, is in the eye of the beholder, and so it's interesting to see like you, uh, how many do you agree with makes your score go up, and how many do you disagree with makes it go down. Yeah. Kind of thing. Janet, are you going to play Callisto? We haven't talked about it with you. Yeah, I'm playing it uh, today actually oh, on nice. my stream. I'm playing that and uh, the Need for Speed game. So. Oh yeah. You, know? um, you we'll get Midnight see... Suns. You got the trifecta. <laughs> Yeah, that's too many to fit into one stream. But um, yeah, I have to I have to pick my spots at this point in the year. Um, I'm interested in it. I am already bracing myself for everyone asking me, "Did you play Dead Space? How was it compared to Dead Space?" I didn't play Dead Space, okay. so I'm like, I'm excited to just play this uh, like in isolation uh, and see how it goes. The in a toxic way, I'm like, oh, people aren't that hot on it. Cool. If it's not good, that means I don't have to finish it. Sure. Because <laughs> I'm really, you know, a lot of games out. Um, and I'm excited about Need for Speed, especially with, um, bless your comments on it. Make me really optimistic about it. Um, I love driving games. I feel like it's something that not a lot of people know about me because I maybe don't talk about it very much because it doesn't come up that often. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm very now excited, though, to see how the two shake out um, side by side because I feel like Callisto had way more hype than Need for Speed. But I'm, I'm hearing, like, a good buzz from Need for Speed. So... We'll we'll see how it shakes out, but yeah, I'll be uh, taste testing those later today, and I'll let you know, guys know what I think. It's funny how for the longest time, I f the people were pretty down on Need for Speed, right? For the last generation. Oh yeah, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. In the one game where EA is like, let's basically shadow drop this one. Like we're gonna start. They didn't announce this game until last month. Like it was yeah. October where they it was released. like the week before the studio launch. They like it got leaked, and then like two days later they had to announce it yeah. or whatever. Like this game has been announced for a month and a half. And it's out, and it's it's really good. Like it's pretty good. It's like, whoa, wh where was where's this been? Like, why didn't you market this? I wonder how it's gonna. I wonder how it's gonna do in terms of sales. Well, I mean, this comes back to expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it, that could be a big part of it. Where you're talking about, like, it's not a franchise that is uh, the crown jewel by any stretch of the imagination. So I think there is. It is so easy to roll your eyes at another installment of it. So you announce it late, you put it out quick, and people don't have expectations for it. It goes up, and it kind of goes back to what we're talking uh, about with all these other, the reviews for Callisto. And I'd bring in Marvel Sons, where I saw you know Jeff Gersman last night after a review embargo was like, "Man, 
based on what you you would ask me before this, it would have seemed like Midnight Suns was going to be the one every, a lot of people would be down on or be mixed in that Callisto would be the one everybody loved. And it's this yeah. interesting reverse of how it is. And it's like, it is fascinating in terms of how much a hype cycle can get people hyped for it and then what it actually comes out as in the end. But enough of that, ladies and gentlemen. If you like a hype cycle, let me tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny. The Over there, the you can get, get hyped for all our content and be watching live just like my dog Nick96 is, Omega Buster is, and Chris BR. Of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can watch us record the shows live. You can get them ad free. You can get 38 episodes of bonus exclusive content each and every month, including a daily Greg Wave vlog from me each and every weekday. But I digress. You're not on patreon.com slash kind of funny. So here's a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. I've had my mom using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal, and I have to say, now is the perfect time to switch. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash kind of funny. That's mintmobile.com slash kind of funny. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash kind kind of funny. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? I don't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash KF Games. That's Chime.com slash KF Games. Games. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs at 7-Eleven or any Allpoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. So again, start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash KF games. That's chime.com slash KF games. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Look how cool I look. You too can look this cool without breaking the bank this holiday season. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 shades for a fraction of the price and a fraction of that price during their biggest Black Friday sale ever. The best part about Shady Rays is their insane protection program featuring lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Dropped in the lake, off a cliff, anything. If you get the wrong style for yourself or someone else, no need to worry. Avoid the hassle and the forced thank yous with free 30-day exchanges and returns. You will either love the shades or Shady Rays will pay to ship them back. Act now for the best Black Friday selection. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades. Time for topic of the show. The second time we've done this. God of War versus The Last of Us. Spoilers for all four games. Because, of course, we're talking about 2018 God of War and Ragnarok and Last of Us Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, I have the exact same five categories we judge The Last of Us versus Last of Us 2 on. Journey, gameplay, characters, pacing, twists. Blessing, Eddie Oye, Jr. Between the two God of Wars and the two Last of Us, who has the better journey? Oh, you had to start with me. You had to start with me. Am I allowed to give ties? No. no. What? Absolutely not. This is oh. how it was last time. Remember, we have to come down and then we're going to do little votes and we'll have an, we'll have an yeah, actual as soon scientific question. I saw quest. this in the doc. I was like, here we go. Blessing always it, has to be like, we're, you know what we're said we're going to do? I'm going to do something slightly different. That's cool. because um, usually these conversations no. happen when I'm on KFTD and I get, I'll get to participate on the Slack messages. And so that's how we get 
category is like journey. What does that even mean? What is a, what is what a journey? Mean, Interpret it the way about? you want to. And you were on the last episode where yes. we did the last of us with the last of us. I didn't agree with the because again, I was on the squad. Oh, yeah, journey. What has the better journey? Okay, I would. So I would define journey as the overall experience of getting from point A to point B. Um, and you can kind of toss in a couple elements of that. I would say, you know, plot construction, um, how it approaches its climax, like those kind of elements. Like the, it's not quite plot though, but like mm. the over, it's it's close to plot. The overall experience yeah. from when you boot up the game to when you have that like ugh, the credits roll and okay. how you feel after that. Like that is the journey. Also, if we can you have know, a we always talk about like was it worth the journey? Like that is the journey. If we can have a private conversation, us. The Trogs, people watching later. In the Trog chat, patreon.com slash kind of funny, Madeline Stanley, who's here every week, incredibly dedicated. Oh man, I gotta leave before I get T Lu 2 spoiled. Bye, everyone. But you haven't played T Lu 2. Madeline, you, she's gone, so we won't know. But Madeline, what? Go play, go play The Last of Us Part 2, Madeline. And not to mention, like, I, I can't. That's what they're going to do right we're now. We're so, like, we are so. Madeline's been here every episode, I feel and like. And that's my thing, and I feel like at this point, We've gloved off Last of Us 2 spoilers a long time ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. We actively talk about that. My dog, Nick96, she just played TLU 1 this year. What's what? her fucking excuse for not playing TLU 2? You finish TLU 1, you go right into TLU 2. Wow. <laughs> the, t- the, the Time Lord's 12. Damn, buy it. <laughs> buy it, yo. It's like 10 bucks on PSN. <laughs> okay. All right, Madeline, whatever. Uh, blessing. I, we can go. We can go away from you if you want. We can go down the list. Yeah, here. start 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 elsewhere. Would you like? Yeah, let, let me do this. Oh, no, I was gonna say like start with one of you guys. I'll give my answer second or third. Well, here I'm gonna give you two arguments that aren't me or Janet because okay. we don't want to sway you. Instead, I will welcome Greg W to the show who wrote in, of course, just like you can on kindoffunny.com slash p s i l y for free <gasps> and gives it to God of War. The two games and their stories are trying to tell are different, so this is kind of an unfair comparison, but. The linear story of God of War lends itself better to the journey Atreus and Kratos are on in the 2018 game plus the sequel. There are major events and reveals along the way. However, the continuity of the story rarely tugs or reframes uh, what we had known as true moment to moment. Uh, In The Last of Us, uh, and especially in Part 2, editing is used to manipulate what information is provided to the player at different points in the game. These editing techniques are used to great effect and are what make it a masterpiece in storytelling. Both journeys are great, but God of War gets the edge for playing it straight while still being able to deliver a more than satisfying journey and ending. Now, if you want another argument, Chris from that Tampa swamp writes in and says, The Last of Us, only because it's not set in a fantasy world where people can get brought back to life. It diminishes the stakes of God of War. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Janet, who are you picking? I'm going God of War, um, which I'm not... Smart woman. I'm not completely confident on that because I think they are very close. There's so much... There's there's so much more pain in the journey of Last of Us, which I think kind of is an automatic point against it on like when you think of both journeys, one's polarizing and one's like, what an epic good adventure. So I think that is a little bit of a, a bias in favor of God of War, but holistically, like to Greg W or Greg Y's point, it says Greg Y here, but if it's supposed to be W, to their point, I think that linearity Wait, why would it be Greg, does play. Why would it be Greg W? I don't know. I thought you said Greg W, but I see Greg Y on the thing. But anyway. I'm trying to um, act like I screwed it up. You know what I mean? When it says Greg did, Y. You, you did say Greg W. Well, Barrett, okay. <laughs> quiet down there. Quiet down there, Barrett. All right? Thank you, thank you Barrett. Thank saying, you, Barrett. On the record. But yes. We'll Barrett, play the Barrett, sorry. I can't give you a ride home tonight. Oh. Um, I got you, He'll Barrett. get there somehow. But yes, the overall journey of God of War. I think we, you know, we talk so much about it, specifically Ragnarok, as being that epic tale in the traditional grandiose storytelling sense like it feels like you are reading something of mythos that's exciting you know i was on the edge of my seat many a times during the journey of god of war while last of us i wasn't compelled in the same way it was an an incredible journey and i did enjoy where they took me because i I was excited to see it play out and i think they did some really like amazing and devastating things with the storytelling but the overall journey of god of war i think is enjoyable it has that push and pull in a way that's a little bit more palatable than i think of what last of us is i also think last of us isn't quite a journey in the more traditional sense like it is more of a story than it is a journey which is why i give it to god of war like god of war we go from one place we get to another we have goals last of us isn't a game of goals it's a game of following feelings until someone ends up dead like that's the game and i'm not saying that makes it a bad story but that's why i feel like in terms of construction the journey of god of war edges out last of us for me 
Yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, the Greg why uh, a recounting okay. of it kind of rings true for me, too, where when I think about a journey and I think about where we've taken the characters and, you know, the literal journey they've been on, the emotional story the, or journey they've been on, uh, God of War gets my nod here for the better journey as well. Not because of anything was wrong with Last of Us, but because it was God of War. Such a personal, such a boots on the ground thing. You know, there's a joke in Ragnarok that I got in post game. You might have gotten somewhere else, right? Where uh, uh, Mimir is like poo pooing uh, Spartan store or Spartan plays because they're all set in one day. And Kratos is like, it's better that way. You know, he's it's and it's totally them obviously joking around about the fact that their game's a one shot. But I think it works so well both for yeah those epic moments if, because we've been with him in his house, in his bed, just chilling, right? To then be into these giant, crazy monsters and uh, creatures you're fighting and being thrown through the air and all these different things. Like, on top of just how simple, in quotes, the 2018 journey is to get to the top of the mountain, but actually is so complex, let alone as crazy as Ragnarok is and where the places we go there and where we end that. Like, I feel like that is a journey. I would say in God of War, you experience the journey, and in Last of Us, you're often told the journey. Because Last of Us is... We are, part one, crossing the United States of America, right? But we get snapshots of it, which I love because you jump around the seasons and you do all this different stuff, but we're not with them every moment of their journey and moving on, right? And even with Last of Us Part Two, it's a similar thing, especially with the time jump and getting both sides of the story in Last of Us Part Two. I, I agree with a lot of what Greg uh, Y says. God damn it. Dang, there now it is. Now you got it in my head. Now you got it in my head. Got you, Still fired up about these trophies. Uh, but I would give it to God of War. Yeah, I think for me it, it's tough because I think there are things that each of the game do, uh, do better than the others in terms of what they do with their journey. Because for me, when I think of journey, I think of, of, of emotional highs and lows. And I, I think Last of Us is just supreme when it comes to, hey, we're going to take you somewhere like way high in terms of here's a scene of Joel and Ellie driving and uh, Joel plays a tape of like uh, the music that he used to listen to and Ellie's vibing with it, right? Like those emotionally warm moments that you get out of that game, but then you know, another moment where it is, you know, <laughs> Joel getting beat to death with a golf club, right? Like the way in which, sorry, Madeline, <laughs> <laughs> the ways, sorry, Madeline, the ways in which, uh, last of us explores that emotional spectrum and really just takes you all over the place. Right. And like gives reason and gives you reason to identify with where these characters are at in every moment of the journey. For me, that, that does make that, that, that journey special. Um, but then with God of war, right. I think, the one shot camera perspective and how you are yeah on the ground with these characters throughout the whole thing really does help cement hey this a to b experience is you know something memorable from moment to moment because you're with them for every single moment and i think i'm gonna give it to god of war uh for, for the uh for where the first game takes us in particular okay. i really liked the fact that it is hey we're going to the top of the mountain to spread your mother's ashes and that is the focus of this game that is the whole point that is like where that's where we're taking you and everything that happens is just like an interruption on, on the way on the way to that right it is you getting introduced to these different characters it is you know these emotional moments and these moments of growing between kratos and atreus uh but ultimately it is this focus journey of hey we're trying to do the simple thing and we're trying to you know honor our mother in this way right and that then extends into god of war ragnarok and where that game takes you as well right and for god of war ragnarok i like that journey too of it being being this more epic more hey we're going to take you to asgard we're going to take you to these different places and show you and show you the breadth of the norse realm um for me that really made that journey special even though for me it's like like a hair of difference in terms sure. of quality between them in terms of the journey i can probably switch on any given day honestly yeah if i may just uh for me the journey is about how the piece of art leaves you once you walk away from it sure. and uh i think they're both very different um but i think they're they're both very successful in what they do. I, and I think, it, to me, it's just preference. I think they're both very successful in what they do. Uh, but it's about, do you want to leave a story feeling kind of empty and hopeless uh, about how things uh, are at with humanity? That's The Last of Us, and it does it super well. And then if you want a, a journey that leaves you a little more fulfilling about life and where a character can grow, that is God of War. Um, and, yeah, I, I think both... The ending of Ragnarok and the ending of Last of Us Part Two are both of they're like they're, polar they're in like the top four of my favorite video game endings of all time. Mm. But I, I, I think yeah, I would lean God of War Ragnarok just because of like Greg says. Like I, I do agree with him. I think Kratos might be the best written character in video games, yeah, and, yeah. and where they leave him, even just in the main story. I know there's so much after um, kind of the the main plot point right uh, in Ragnarok and Endgame stuff, but yeah. 
I think what tips this a little bit over the edge for me too is like I, I think when we get to these games and their journeys, right? It, it it turns into a battle of like what what can we nitpick a little bit to like bring the other up or bring one down. And for the Last of Us, I even though overall I fucking love that journey, there are parts of that journey that I didn't like, right? And the two things that come to mind in particular is the the shift from ellie to abby and how jarring it was yeah you know I, I i liked abby's part save that because i mean we're coming i have a yeah. that's gonna be a big part of pacing when we get there mm. and the other thing too is like the end of um last was part two when ellie kind of goes back and like has that last moment of like i gotta get revenge and like that was part of the game i know it's part of the art i know this is like what they wanted to do but the whole time i'm like you don't have to do this this game should have ended we could have cut here why are we still why are we still even on this journey um so I think with that, yeah, God of War kind of inches up above uh, because of that. There you go. Perfect game for God of War. On Journey, God of War gets it 3-0 with a tip of the hat from Barrett. I'm putting Barrett's comments will be tips of the hat in case I don't want to tie. <laughs> <laughs> then we got gameplay, all right? Who is the better gameplay between the two God of Wars and the two Last of Uses? Janet Garcia. I went God of War, um, which I am not confident on either. Again, there's just such great games through and through um, they can really go either way uh i'm i lean on god of war because i feel like moment to moment and consistently it's just a little bit again there's kind of different styles but it's sure. a little bit more exciting to do and it, like approachable um and also i think god of war for me gets a little bit of extra points for having um a wider array of what you do with the gameplay in terms of like exploration like kind of walking some moments puzzle moments um arena combat and also having playing to that higher level and again that it, glass of us wouldn't be able to have that because of the kind of game it is sure. um but i also think like the structure of last of us limits what you can do with the gameplay while with god of war you can have stuff like super hard like optional boss battles and arena challenges and have that all weave so well with the story at the same time so that's why i kind of edged out to god of war i also think the gameplay it it is more dynamic and it advances more like through the new weapons you get you know in 2018 it's the blades of chaos which it's funny to think of that as a new weapon because it's like the oldest <laughs> weapon in the franchise um and then you know in ragnarok it's um was dropped near the spear like that when i got that i was like oh my god like it was so freaking cool and it was like one of my favorite i think like additions to what they had going for them. I think they smoothed it out so well. I think there's so many like fun dynamics with like the runic abilities. Um, to me, the gameplay of God of War, while it's inherently simplistic gameplay in that it's very like hack and slash, anyone can kind of pick up a stick and start, you know, beating the shit out of everybody. Um, there's so much they do with it. To me, it's like the best cheeseburger you can make where a cheeseburger is not inherently a super elevated thing, but they do it so well and the craftsmanship so good that like, wow, this is the greatest version of something that at its baseline is incredibly basic and i think they just got the most out of what they did there again last of us too i know people are gonna say best sales game ever and stuff like that but that's why i was leaning on god of war sure. but really it just depends on the day for me because last of us obviously that gameplay hits as well i also think the 20 if we're taking them as a pair specifically 2018 and ragnarok i think edges out one and two because two is so good for last of us but one still really enjoyable gameplay don't need like a remake or anything like that but <laughs> i feel like it is a little bit on the weaker end to some degree in you know you feel you feel that's a little bit old in the modern era well, sure. well obviously 2018 came out later so kind of favors in that way but that's why i picked god of war yeah see i'm going the opposite end of this one i'm and i would pick last of us and uh it is carried a lot by Last of Us Part Two and how great that is and how stealth, how good it feels to be in stealth and how good it feels to be in combat and everything else they did there and going prone. God forbid Joel could ever do that. Uh, and having all that action. But I would also include in terms of why I'm picking it, it's because God of War also, fantastic at gameplay, a, a great game to play. Obviously, there's so many different weapons to use, so many different things to do. But in a moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, I'm more interested in playing the last of us because i really do enjoy exploring the world with purpose yes there's the great line in ragnarok my father likes loot you know what i mean like what's he doing he's going off and do that and i get that but breaking the ob open getting the hack silver getting the different what uh, to me everything i loot in god of war and god of war ragnarok is just whatever MacGuffin. i don't i don't pay attention to what it is i don't pay i don't care until i get to talking to Sindri or talking to Brock and being like, all right, cool. I need to upgrade. What am I looking for? Maybe I'll remember what I'm looking for, but in general, you're not going out and targeting things. And I know in last of us, you're not really either, but it was that idea of 
the one-to-one opening a drawer, pulling out a piece of scissor, pulling out a rag. And this is Last of Us 1 and Last of Us 2. Pulling that thing out, like, oh, cool, I'm going to make a Molotov because I know I'm going to do this. I know I'm going to go do that. There's something about the gameplay of Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2 being that that made me feel more invested in the moment-to-moment of it, that I was living that adventure, that I was there, I was scrounging for these different things. Whereas picking up a green orb or a red orb or whatever in God of War is cool and leads to something cool. I enjoy battling, I enjoy fighting, I enjoy that in the game. I enjoy the immersion, I think, last of Last of Us more, which is why I would go that way. Yeah, I agree. I would also go The Last of Us for gameplay. I think that for me, it, it, com- it comes back to uh, how dynamic it is, right? Like, I would argue that The Last of Us gameplay for me is more dynamic than the God of War stuff. And that comes down to more of the design around enemy placement uh, and, like, the options that the games the game gives you to approach uh, combat scenarios, where it is in The Last of Us Part 2, right? You can't take things... In the last one, part one, actually, you can take things stealthy or aggressive, or you can go prone under a car and like wait for a thing and then leave a bomb somewhere and like really plan out how you're gonna fuck up this group of people, right? Fuck like up some dogs. It's fu- not the dogs, man. Not the dogs. <laughs> oh, that's so rough. It's so heartbreaking every time. Hey, rough. Hey. Uh, but yeah, no, it's like. Oh my god. <laughs> it's the the last one's gameplay. I think gives you so many options to play the way you want to play. Uh, whereas the God of War gameplay, for me, I did toward the end of my time with God of War Ragnarok, and I would extend this back to God of War 2018 as well, right? Like, it was rinse, wash, repeat of, all right, let's get into it. Sure. Bust out the blades, bust out the axe, bust out drop near, right? And, and like, uh, uh, bust out my, my uh, runic abilities. And it was more of a, a rotation of all the abilities uh, and weapons that I have, right? And, and uh, kind of using them in, the com- in every combat scenarios in ways that didn't feel like all right, I'm going to go into this combat scenario and plan out this thing, right? I think for me, that's what I, I, I enjoy more about uh, about gameplay, right? Is the idea of what is how am I going to make this my own, right? How am yeah. I going to approach this situation and solve it like a puzzle or, you know, figure out like what my own play style is to approach this thing. And I think for me with Last of Us as well, when I look at survival horror, right? If I'm putting Last of Us in the, in the uh, category of survival horror, I think The Last of Us is some of the best in its genre. And with God of War, I don't. I wouldn't say God of War in terms of gameplay and combat, right? As an action game, whether you want to say character action or non-character action, I wouldn't say the gameplay is some of the best in its genre. I think it's really great in its in its genre. Um, but I get more of my enjoyment out of, out of uh, God of War's gameplay comes with, you know, having fun with the, the axe, right? Throwing it around, right? Or like the different abilities you get with the Levi- with um, the Blades of Chaos and how satisfying it can be to uh, just take out enemies. But I think in terms of uh, design sense, right? Like there are there are things that I would put above God of War in terms of, of gameplay in action games. In survival horror, there are, there's very few I'll put above Last of Us in terms of survival horror. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, you are uh, backed by the chat here. Uh, Dan Pine wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y and says, t 2 specifically has the best stealth gameplay since Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, and then, of course, people wrote in the opposite way, too. Uh, Billy uh, Jetma wrote in and said, God of War, both games, especially the sequel, uh, have a lot of fun with the idea of playing with your food. Uh, but God of War arguably perfects it. It gives you enough freedom to feel like a badass and enough challenge to have stakes. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Ah, Thanos! Uh, Thanos! Uh, I would also uh, shout out uh, level design. Greg, you and I were talking about this uh, on a drive-in of uh, the the way that kind of uh, encounter areas are designed in Last of Us Part Two are so well designed mm. and so intricate. Yeah. And most times, like even uh, on my second playthrough where I finish an encounter, if like I would discover like an entire area that I didn't even utilize uh, in there, it feels, blessing you'll appreciate it, like it feels like dishonored in in the way that oh, yeah. it did, the intricate ways that it designs uh, kind of uh, areas and stuff. And it wasn't until Ragnarok where you started getting more interesting kind of arena design throughout the entire series, I'm going to say, uh, where it feels a lot of people put up the comparison of Doom 2016, uh, of just like the different levels and kind of how they they, they kind of paint the, the structure of an area to kind of make you constantly moving, which, mm-hmm. again, Ragnarok super well utilized but uh when you're talking about it in a gameplay moment to moment sense that was that's the first time it got really really interesting but i still uh, enjoyed uh 2018 of course and throwing that big axe ladies and gentlemen that means gameplay goes to the last of us with a vote of two to one and a tip of the hat from bear we now move to characters i picked god of war was it easy of course not 
But I thought you were going to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, well, you, you sit here and I mean, let's talk about the affection we all have for Joel and Ellie in Last of Us Part 1, right? Let's expand that to get into Last of Us Part 2 and talk about Dina, talk about, you know, uh, Tommy, and maybe you hate him by the end of Last of Us Part 2. But we have feelings for them, right? But it is that idea, and I think so much of it comes back to what I talked about in the 2018 review of God of War, of like having it be this small cast, you know, having it be Freya, having it be Kratos, having it be Atreus, and Mimir, and then Brock and Sindri, and you get so involved with these characters and see them in that one game evolve and change and their relationships grow, to then jump to Ragnarok and have it be that, you know, especially Kratos' uh, relationship, right, to Mimir, to Atreus, right? Atreus' relationship mm-hmm. to Sindri, to see how this has evolved, these have changed, and yada, yada. And then again, fucking the way Freya goes, right? And like, even just the dynamic of Kratos to Freya, right? Where he will not kill this woman, but he also, like does not hold a grudge against her for wanting to kill him. Like there's so much great shit in there, let alone how that game evolves, let alone addition of Thor, uh, his daughter, Odin. Like you start piling it on where it's like last of us part one. Yeah. And part two, plenty of characters. I I do really like in there. Some that I do love, but pound for pound, God of war all, all the way. Maybe it was easy blessing. Was it easy for you? <laughs> I've deleted and retyped my answer to this like nine times as you were talking. I appreciate it. This is another one that I wanted to talk up as a tie. And since we're not doing ties, you know, I'm trying to commit to one. And you, I mean, you bringing up, you know, Ellie and Joel, right? And bringing up uh, like Dina and uh, these different characters, right? Like it was a reminder of how much I love the main characters in The Last of Us so much. And even yeah. like the, the passing characters, when I think of The Last of Us Part One, I every time I, I uh, meet uh, Henry and Sam, I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. Sure. Like we're about to go through this sequence, right? In their face. And like that stuff for me still hits me so hard. And I love the characters and I love the performances so much sure. in, the, in The Last of Us. But I think I probably I will give it to God of War because there is just a an amount of characters that are memorable. Not every character is memorable for me in God of War Ragnarok. Like I guess when you get you to, put a lot in there. There's a lot the in little, there. Little Link boy, the human. Little Link dressed boy, like Link. Freyr's crew. I still don't know who most of those guys are. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah great point. There's, there's a lot. They of do them. get introduced uh, in a way. Of like you remember them like from Freya, the spinoff the game, right? Like, yeah. No, I don't I'm like, no, oh, was there a spinoff? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like there's some of those. But I think, oh man, like Kratos, Atreus, Freya. Mimir, like Mimir is a great one to bring up of like what a fantastic uh, character. Uh, um, Brock and Sindri, like the list goes on in terms of characters that are recurring and do stick around through the entire experience. Right, so I feel like Last of Us for a lot of it, it is oh you meet this character, they're there for a chapter and then they're gone. Right, and I I kind of like that as part of the journey, and I think sure. it works for what the Last of Us is doing. Um, but man, it's it's tough at the end of the day. But I think I'm gonna go God of War, especially for how they develop Kratos, right? I think they do such a good job of taking Kratos from what he was into what he becomes by the end of Ragnarok, and that is a Herculean task, and I think they accomplished it well, so I'm giving it to God of War. Janet, are you going to make it a perfect game for God of War? Yeah, I am. Hey. Um, I'm going God of War as well. Um, kind of to Sorry, I saw somebody in, chat, aren't... somebody in chat mentioned Abby and Levin. I'm like, oh yeah, fuck. Too late. Yeah, Cast your vote. Yeah, 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 like, like, 96, uh, throw it out of here. But Madog I mean, ninety six then follows up. and Ellie again, but like you hate him less because like one of them isn't an ass, you know. It's like that's it, it's, and I don't have you're my people. Having, like, foils and things. God, what a line! What a line! Because there are like, yeah, uh, sure, you know, I guess I don't know. Um, I, I didn't mean to drag Abby in love with this whole um part of the section, but I think obviously again it's a little bit due to the construction. The characters in God of War are allowed to be a little bit more dynamic because they have a more dynamic experience of the world and they have far more autonomy in the world to actually change their lives in a positive way. Last of Us, it's much smaller scale. Like the most positive thing you can do in Last of Us is not die, which is like pretty bleak. Um, And I think you see that in the, in, in, I wouldn't say more one note characters because you do see a level of dynamics with like them having like friendships and relationships and love and all these other aspects. But ultimately it still has a core dark tone to it in a way that god of war the the characters are just a lot more dynamic with having different motivations different backgrounds relationships with each other that change over time shared goals a goal that's sort of shared but then one of them's a secret you know they kind of just have more going um on that front and i just really love the cast specifically and ragnarok i think is what elevated this for me um so many amazing characters introduced and i think they all get their sort of time to shine um and you can choose to dig into that more or less depending on how you want to play like the area with angry boda was incredible freya's side quests are like my favorite things in the game like yeah. her thing with the wedding presents and like oh my god i'm getting like and then even just for like the mainline story where she's you know they're like fighting to like 
destroy the little, you know, the hold that old Odin has on her. And she's like yelling, like, get out of me. And it's like such a good, oh, it's so good. Like the, the acting and the, the delivery. And there's so many like fire lines said by so many people. I think everyone plays their part well while not becoming completely tropey. You know, Mimir does have moments of like guilt and somberness, but he's also just like a funny body side companion. And then like, Oh my god, the freaking squirrel in this game? Like, it's over. You know, it's got a war. Like, there's, I think there's just more, um, the tones, there's just more tones that they get to play with. Um, and as someone that appreciates, like, a good cast, I feel like there's a little bit more to enjoy. While Last of Us, for me, a lot of what shines in that game in general is the the story, the writing, and the emotional weight. Um, which, while character impacts those things, it's not a one-to-one -one. so that's why god of war edges it out for me fair enough uh it was obviously split overall uh a whole bunch of people if you want to go with somebody who tied jj kurz wrote in and tied and said uh both are so well written and fleshed out i want to know everyone's stories and loved their growth i guess god of war would have an edge in history slash side stories uh you would hear as you traverse and then a lot of people were all over the place in terms I of what they were. Back to last one. Huh? I kind of want to switch back to it's the last it's, one. You locked it in. Yeah, right, Madognik96 right. can't do that. I apologize for you. You can't be swayed on that one. Instead, we'll move on to pacing. What two games had the better pacing? Blessing. Uh, I'm going with The Last of Us. Okay. Um, the, I think what really solidifies this is, re is playing The Last of Us Part 1, all right? And, like, hitting each chapter and having that be a oh yeah let's go like i remember this moment like every single chapter i feel like i had a okay i know i know where i'm at like let's let's do this i remember this like step by step exactly like where these hallways take me the exact path to go through and is that because it's my fourth or fifth time playing last of us sure probably but also i think there's a reason why i'm playing last of us for a fourth or fifth, fifth time and that is because i do enjoy the pacing and i do not get bored uh while, while playing through this game last is far two as well i think that game does have imperfect pacing and it does come down to that transition from Abby to, uh, from um Ellie to Abby yeah. right I think it is jarring it is um you know it, it's it's a whole thing to be like oh man I gotta redo my upgrades and like <laughs> go through this process over again and then like re redo this story right right where you built it up to like this this big thing but I do like how um ballsy that was to do that just as a as a gameplay choice and also like i think overall it was a net positive for what they're trying to convey with the game in terms of trying to give you the view of both abby and what's going on with her people and then ellie and what's going on in her mind and with her people right uh for me with the god of war i think one of my very few critiques critiques with ragnarok is the pacing um mm -hmm. i do think that there are moments where it is all right like we're going over here to talk to this guy that we've not talked to or really mentioned that much and then we're done with them in like 30 minutes. Like there are multiple chapters in, in God of War Ragnarok towards the end where I was like, I think this could use an editor. Yeah, if, I, Sir, if Searcher was in 2018, that would have been a whole yes. hour and a half seg a segment. Yeah, and, that, and that's my thing, right? It's like moments like Searcher, moments like, uh, uh, I think moments where it seems like some of the character development might have happened in the side quest as opposed to in like the main story where I'm like, oh, what's up with Freya's crew? And then I talked to Roger and he's like, oh man, there's side quests that deal with them. And I'm like, oh. Gotta get the, gotta get the orb. Yeah, like, <laughs> go maybe I should have done more of the side quest, but I don't like that I would have had to do the side quest to appreciate the main story even uh, even more in that way, right? I feel like the main story should still be good good on its own, right? Not that it's not good, sure. but you guys understand what I'm saying, of right? Course. In terms of, yeah. I don't agree uh, with you and I pick Last of Us, but I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, uh, but yeah, overall, I'm 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 going Last of Us. I, I really enjoy the pacing uh, on the of the franchise as a whole compared yeah. to God of War. I I pick God of War in this one for uh, pacing. Same. Uh, again, I, I it's. The, is it apples to apples? Is it apples to oranges? Is it a different conversation, right? Again, with the anchoring and the intimacy of God of War and being with them every second of the day, I think leads it to, to okay, maybe there is more that, well, this isn't pace right, but is it because you didn't do, and I'm, I'm saying generally, yeah, you, yeah. not you, We I should have done the side mission first, or I should have done that, or I should have blah, blah, blah. I still feel like those moments in the side missions, it's almost, you know, you, you should you have to do them to appreciate it, yeah, yeah. Golden Path is there for you to get there and roll credits and get the majority out of it. I still think if you were to talk to them, they would say their game is everything that's there. In the way that God of War Ragnarok references you doing all the side stuff in 2018, even if you didn't, right? Because mm -hmm. that might be the definition of side quest, but it was mainly they want to give you a start to finish to get there, whatever. All this really comes down to for me is how I don't know if I've ever, and I'm including, you know, Metal Gear Solitude and Raiden, right? Or Raiden. I don't know if I've ever, Raiden. I don't know if I've ever been so thrown out of an experience of whiplash from going from uh ellie to abby where and how much i did not like that and 
yes, eventually I get going and I do, oh man, Abby's great and I like what I'm doing, but it still was such a fucking build to this moment and then to have it ripped away was so, oh God, I don't, I know I got to reclimb this mountain from the other side now to get there and I understand why you're doing this and yada, 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 but come on. And then of course the fact that there's like, how many more endings <laughs> that you go from there and then you're off to the farm and then you're back out in the thing and you're in Santa Barbara and it's just like, I get it and I adore Last of Us Part 2. This isn't me doing it, but in terms of pacing, I, I appreciated just being with Kratos and Atreus and setting my own pace, I guess, in some regard. Janet? Yeah, kind of same deal, though I, I like the split between Ellie and Abby. Like, I didn't have any problem with it when I played it. Still love it. I think Last of Us has more interesting slash daring pacing um and overall they do like some really incredible things with storytelling the reason i give it to god of war is because it's i don't i personally don't have any notes for the pacing of god of war ragnarok or even 2018 to that extent part of that is because it's a little bit less ambitious and what it's how it pushes and pulls but i think it also just does that a little smoother um god of war also touches on you know the playing as multiple characters or multiple sets of characters but it feels a lot more interwoven than it does in Last of Us. And part of that is just, due, frankly, due to the construction of like how much time you spend and the fact that you are going back and forth during different parts while Last of Us is like one chunk, another chunk. And then for me, like the, the I wouldn't say the L in Last of Us because, well, maybe a little bit. I don't like Santa Barbara. Like narratively, I get why it happened. And it's not that I'm mad that like, I'm not really mad that Ellie went to go fuck up her life because that's like what she does. She <laughs> fucks up her life because she was raised by a fuck up. So like, that's, that's, that's her role. Play oh, your role, God. girl. Like I'm here for it. <laughs> um, well, but it just felt like another, like it just felt like it didn't quite fit. Like I, you know, we went A and then we went B and now we're like somewhere else again. And then it kind of opens up a whole can of worms of like this other faction that's like enslaving people. And like, maybe you don't want to dig into it because the point's just to shine a light on like how fucked up the world is even beyond this microcosm. But like, I just, it just felt a little bit sloppy um, in that, that Santa Barbara section for me as a player. And that's why I give it to God of War. Cause it's just a little bit smoother again. I'm not saying that means God of War is a better experience because the pacing is better, but I think it, the pacing is just better. Uh, but it's also like it it loses some of that ambition in that here's, pacing. But yeah. Here's something interesting to throw into this argument. That's just a conversation. We'd never argue. Sure. You brought up, and I forget his name, but the guy who's made a molten lava. that Surter. 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 But it is that idea of we got there and we got the thing and we got out, right? And it, like, it would have been longer in the game if you know it would have been in 2018 and yet you got to... By the time I got there, I didn't want to race to the finish, but I also wasn't stoked to do something that wasn't like mainline Ragnarok Odin. I yeah. wanted I wanted those beats for it, which kind of in a way reminds me of Santa Barbara, where when we when I got there and Ellie gets captured and then there's a whole thing and she's been stabbed and I'm breaking out and it's just like, mm. yeah, this is cool, but I'm really interested in seeing Abby and rolling the credits on this, not because I want it to be done, but because I'm trying to close this story at this part. Like I it wasn't. I don't want to make it sound like it was a deadline pressure. It wasn't at the time. It was just my own. Fuck, I've been trying to fucking, I thought we were ending when the two things and I got to play. And now this is, it's like, I kind of appreciate that about Ragnarok. Even that mm -hmm. you, the thing you don't, that I was there. I'm like, I don't really know who this fucking dude is. What's he up yeah. to? Okay. He's going to give me his heart. Cause I said something cool. Get my blades hot. <laughs> my, my hang yeah, up too, he doesn't want to fuck his wife to save the world. Like I, I get it, I guess <laughs> like, you know, my and then he did a beautiful picture. Him, though. Good fight. I'm good with it. I just, I, I really it. liked his depiction. He was like very different than I like, you know, I, I put up the image of searcher from Thor Ragnarok and it's just like a very different vibe. I, I, I like the performance and writing and I just wanted to learn more about him. And the, the fact that it's like, He's kind of in and out like so quickly. I was like, oh man, I kind of wanted to uh, breathe with uh, this character a little mm. bit more. Well, I got good news from you. He doesn't fuck with anybody though. You know what I mean? He's like, look, I don't even know where the fuck you came here. To be honest, yeah. I hope something kills you before you can talk to me again. Yeah, like and it honestly, kind of fits. Outside of that, and then I feel like the um, Angra Boda section in Ironwood. The only problem I have a, a gripe with in that section is when you go down in the caves and they go get like they have to clear out the cave. That's like at the very tail end of that segment. I'm like. I feel like we could have maybe scaled back on this, and uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's pretty much it for Ragnarok. Where I, I think have gripes with for it. me with the because like the the, the search of stuff, and I think moments like that stick out to me in pacing. But it's more so the gameplay pacing of like, all right, I'm gonna get here. I'm gonna do another fight that's been like all the other fights I've done. All right, now I gotta get out of here and do more fights that have been like all the fights oh, I've but, done. But bless, it's two Valkyries this time. But that is, this time it's two Valkyries. The Valkyries actually didn't mind. I, I like, kind of liked fighting the Valkyries, but it's more so just the ads and like the regular enemies that they'll throw at you. Where I'm like. 
oh man, I like like leaving Surtur and like maybe I forget if it was Surtur or somebody else, but I'm pretty sure I was in Muswellheim. Leaving that area, I was like, all right, I know I'm gonna run into more enemies, and like I'm kind of ready to like yeah, not fight do, more you enemies. Do run into like <laughs> uh, like three or four fights yeah. in a row, back to back. And to I'm like, there. just let me leave, <laughs> God of War. Let leave. me go, God damn <laughs> let it. Let me go. I got a world to save. Barry, you'll be excited. Uh, Jason Shry is reporting right now that there is a Surtur game coming. It's called Surtur Fight for Fortune. It'll what? be a, it'll be a card game where you can get all the backstory about him <laughs> oh. and his wife and his hot heart. Is Wait, that what, is, is that that what like Uncharted Fight for Fortune was about? <laughs> yeah. Who knows what Fight for Fortune was about from Uncharted? This is, I'm glad to see the Fight for Fortune. I was like, was it about a random enemy character? I, or like, all about enemy, fuck, I said like, I wanted to go down there. Fight for Fortune again. is the, the card game, right? Yeah. So is Surtur Fight for Fortune the spiritual successor to that? I think it's part of the Fight for Fortune series, yeah. God. Is that a series? No, I made this up. This is all oh, fake. Yeah, this, this is all is very, very that fake. I thought, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, time for the final one, twists. Who had the better twists between Last of Us and God of War? Janet Garcia, game plan, it's Last roller of skating. Us. Okay, Last well. of Us. It's not even close. Um, yeah, Last of Us is... all. I feel like all the joy from Last of Us... It, not all the joy, but like a lot of it comes from the twists in it. Um, and how unexpected aspects of the plot are. Um, yeah, and then, I, and then I think how, too, it leads you down different roads to feel certain ways about different characters. And I, I wouldn't count that as a twist, but I feel like it does toy with your... And this is also why people don't like The Last of Us, because it toys with your emotions. It fucks with you, and you're like, I want things to be nice. And they're like, what's well, not going to be nice? But then you're going to learn this other thing. And now, now you're feeling a different type of way, and now you're conflicted, and you're all twisted up. It, it twists the games. It's a freaking pretzel of a game, and I love it for that. <laughs> Um, God of War. I mean, what twist does it have here? Like, I don't care Loki. about that twist, to be honest. Yeah, the uh, look, 2018 Loki's not a twist. It's a reveal to me. Yeah, that's more it's a reveal. reveal. Yeah. I agree. Not I agree. A fair twist. enough. Fair enough. All right, cool. I take it back. Everybody. Also, that doesn't mean anything to you unless you like. No, like you need outside ancillary information for that to even have deeper meaning, which most people have that on a casual sense. But when I got there personally, I wasn't. Everyone's yeah. like, what? like if I didn't see and the I'm MCU like, Thor movies, oh, okay. I wouldn't have understood what that meant. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I mean, I still, to, I mean, maybe it's on me, but, like, frankly, I still barely, like, I didn't feel anything from that, to be honest. I think it was more of a twist maybe seeing that, like, the the prophecy of, again, it's not a twist, it's a reveal. It's like the, if Kratos dying, that's a that's a well, reveal it, to, of a to prophecy, me, it, not a twist. It, it felt like a, a twist just because twist? of uh, the nature of, even if you know uh, Norse mythology on such a surface, surface level, or, or barely anything, right, like the... The fact that Kratos is Loki's father, I, I feel like was not that Atreus's uh, intended name was Loki, but that uh, Kratos is the the father of Loki. That felt like the more twisty side of it. But uh, I, I get where you're coming from, though. I would like to ask a question to the chat uh, live on patreon.com slash kind of funny. My dog Nick 96 says, if I'm being honest, the tear twist didn't surprise me, not because I saw it coming, but because the actors sounded the same. I was like, Tear sounds just like Odin, huh? It's different actors, though. Yeah, are you implying that they were the same actor because they're not? Or do you just mean the cadence, which I didn't pick up on at all? Dog Nick 96. Yeah, get back I think it's in performance there stuff, though. That's like kind of interesting. But like in the interview, when we talked to Eric Williams, yeah. right, I think he mentioned that uh, he, he didn't, didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like he didn't tell the actor. Second, no, yeah. he did. Oh, no, he did. He that's, told him, but he told he, him late. And yeah, I uh, he, he almost didn't tell him. That was the thing. And other people were like, you got to tell him, right? And That's so, what it was. And then it was like, <laughs> once they got into like recording sessions, he was like, all right, this is who Tear is really owed okay. the entire time. Kind of but my dog, Nick 96, says, I knew it was not the same actor. I just thought that the cadence was similar, which is interesting because when you meet, or oh, I was already spoiling, when you meet real Tear later on and free him from Odin's prison. He, no, no, wait, I haven't, got, I haven't done that yet. It's on you. Too bad. Uh, he talked just like the tear I knew. It's not fair. I can't leave the show because I'm on it. Listen, you and Madeline Staley, get the hell out of here. <laughs> right? God. Look, Jesus it sounds Christ. like a better way to spend my afternoon. Hang on, Madeline, these clowns over here. All right, calm down. <laughs> I got it. All right, calm down. I, over I did see tear coming, though. That's my thing. Is like Really? Yeah. I didn't see it coming. I, here's I what I, like, <gasps> I guess we like, haven't I mean, like, had like, the full discussion. Because, like, I thought, so I actually thought that Odin was disguised as Sindri, because I thought throughout the whole game Sindri was acting weird. Uh, and so mm. I was like, this motherfucker is, 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 is uh, uh, Odin. Uh, but with Tyr, from the get-go, I was like, this motherfucker is going to betray us. <laughs> like, I, I feel it. Like, I don't, I'm getting bad vibes from Tyr, and she I had that throughout the whole vibes. time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And so when it happened, I was like, I fucking knew it. And they turned into Odin. I was like, "Oh, I thought Sindri was going to do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I was close. Just I was close. Him. I just had the, the, you know, the equations and the weird. It spots. was a, it was cool though. I don't want to downplay that. I didn't. I did enjoy that twist, but 
it wasn't it didn't move heaven and earth for me it was just like a cool thing tossed into the mix but it wasn't like a big i feel like it i feel like it's so little of a twist that even if you had that spoiled for you it wouldn't be that big of a deal yeah like, you I, it honestly might enhance it you know barrett went through and did that second playthrough of ragnarok right after we uh beat it and reviewed it and he was like oh man knowing that tears odin it, you read and see more uh acting yeah the way the way he double performs uh some scenes early double? on uh when you just think he's tear is like really really impressive well, ladies and gentlemen by a score of three to one wait i don't think we said our well we all said i i, I, I thought we all said last of us at one time no, I, I think for sure. The, I think yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, well, what do you think? Uh, I think it's the God of War. No, it's Last of Us. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, I think it's you know, not even close. It's not even close. The argument gets summed up. Yeah, of course. All the twists of Last of Us and where you're going and who's the, what, and then of course Last of Us Part Two in general. Like, there's a million things there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had a whole spiel. I just wanted to make sure. People okay, like, cool. It's been it's it was a perfect game there, three and zero to give us the Last of Us, but it's too little, too late. God of War has been declared the better two game. Uh, by a score of three to two. You voted. <laughs> yeah, but like I didn't pick these categories. Um, I mean, it, last, okay. I this was scientific, everybody. It was scientific. I, yeah. We, we got to look but at the science but that's, again. But we always talk about how that's flawed, right? So I don't know. But so you're I saying think it's science is flawed, Janet? Wow. You sound I do really think, crazy. I was going to say, oh Janet, what are you talking about? I never thought I'd see you. Unfortunately, I don't you. sound that crazy to some Janet people. But anyway. Um, no, I... I, it was really interesting looking at this because before I remembered like how we break it into different pieces, I was like, oh, which one am I picking? Maybe Last of Us. And then it is funny, though, to go piece by piece. I'm leaning a lot on God of War. And I, I honestly don't know, like, if you were to ask me which game is better, like, I have to rank them in a list, you know, like, I'm eventually working on my top 100 games list. I don't know where I'm ranking these, um, which is, I think, a testament to how good God of War Ragnarok specifically is um, and how it just kind of elevated the whole franchise and that package combined. Um, but yeah, this this one was really kind of brutal. And I like went back and forth on so many categories versus I think like last was two to one. That was a bit easier, I think, just because they do have a similar gap in terms of, I think, quality, grandiosity. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull up. I have like my list of top, not 100 games, but like just a bunch of games ranked. I think it's like 80 something at this point. And I'm trying to find, I forget if I've added Ragnarok to this list. I don't think I've added Ragnarok yet. So I got to do that. But, like, let me see. Yeah, well, I'm waiting to add this year's games uh, for after I do my top 10. Mm, smart. Because yeah. I do have my top 100 games list hidden somewhere. Last of Us, the first Last of Us for me, the number seven. My number seven favorite wow. game. That's really wow. high. Wow. Yeah. Right above Super Mario no, Brothers wait, wait. 3. <laughs> Is this your favorite games or the best games? Because that's kind of different. Uh, kind of mixed I together. think it's. I, uh, the, the, the I don't stand in his voice. I don't even know how you <laughs> fucking define it. Yeah, anymore. I don't know. I just must same. I'm both, but like well, more favorites. More the favorite heart and best is the mind with like the heart's kind of involved. I guess heart. I guess favorite because like if I was doing a, I wouldn't care to do a best games list because like I've not played. Every you video have to game. be very objective, blessing, and you have to play every single video game of all time. Yeah, I think that's the main thing is I've not played every single video game, so I'm not gonna make a best list. But yeah, like last was having my number seven. Last is part two. I have it my number twenty one. Where's God of War? I know God of War is in here somewhere. Like at number eighty nine. Start talking. I'll find it. It's Ladies and gentlemen, this has been PS. I love you. XOXO. We've decided scientifically, emphatically, God of War, king of the PlayStation franchise. The God of War for me is my number thirty three favorite game of all time. Right after Nier Automata, where it belongs. All right. Nier Automata. Sure. Great game. Play Nier Automata, everybody. If you like PS, I love you. XOXO. Of course, you should go to kindoffunny.com slash. Well, damn it, fuck. Patreon.com slash kind of funny, <laughs> where, of course, you can watch us record each and every episode live. You can get ad free and you can get 38 bonus exclusive episodes. Or you can of do kind of funny.com says Patreon. That's it doesn't go, it doesn't do something different. Oh, does it not? I thought so. Hold on. Kind of funny.com. That's when I always right. fuck that up. I always, that's how I pivot. pivit. No, yeah, no, yeah. it tells well, you that, that well, this that is like to, that's the that's the write in link yeah, that we yeah, used to do for write ins, but write ins are free, so you can go to kind of funny.com slash PSI love you to write in for stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But like when you go to kind of funny, like the, the link tree just takes you to the Patreons now. No, well, oh, yeah, but it does but it, it like that. Dear way. What I'm going to do right now live is go change that. I'm going to the dashboard. I'll, I'll, oh, do that. You're doing I'll your send H that redirect. Your HTML? You're you. going to yeah, get I'm there. coding. You know what Whoa, live on the show. Did you guys know that Bitly's are behind a paywall now or whatever? You got to sign up on an account now to do a Bitly? Oh, That's wow. Up. Yeah, I tried to do it this morning. Also, un unrelated, but oh, I finally Jesus. finished building this. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, right now, yeah, Janet's tall holding neck. up uh, tall neck tall from neck. Horizon. A Lego tall neck. It's all, honestly very impressive. It's the biggest uh, Lego set I've built, because before this, I think I only did one that was like, I don't know, 200 pieces, 300 pieces. So I was scared building this. I'm like, 
I might have messed this up, but it worked out. It worked out real good. He's there in all his glory. So it, but it's just a little bit. It's like half, not even half an inch, probably less. Too tall to fit into the IKEA IKEA Calix, oh, uh, no. shelf squares. Just okay. uh, shorten his uh, legs a little bit. Yeah, Ooh. take out a block. Nobody will know. I don't maybe even know how I would be able neck. to. Maybe make, huh? make him a regular now. All right. We have clearly run out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you have no bucks to toss our way on kindoffunny.com slash Patreon, that didn't do what I wanted to do. Oh, because it's lowercase. Why does uppercase and lowercase matter? That's weird. Oh, yeah. That's been a thing for these links. It's kind of upsetting. Very stupid. Yeah. Very, very stupid. Anyway, so by the time 13, you see it, it'll be fixed. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny uh, games. Uh, you can listen on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get PSI Love You XOXO, please consider rating it, subscribing to it, ringing the bell, but mainly, you know, leaving some ratings and stuff and saying it's great and cool. Uh, of course, uh, that's it. And then we're back next week with more. Don't forget the game awards are next week. That's crazy. Uh, we're recording early. We're going to do our PlayStation of Year awards, the, uh, the usual playstation oh. awards we do so we're recording that on tuesday oh. we'll for an update on monday for it yeah we got to get our butts in gear oh. it's, it's a busy week with game awards and everything else uh but ladies and gentlemen until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you